Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Hill is Always Greener, a show where four friends have chill discussions about Sonic the Hedgehog to distract themselves from the inevitable passage of time and their own rapidly waning ability to relate to the youth. Am I right, fellas? For once, I feel like a child again. Let me yeah. just <laughs> let me hold on to this for this last <laughs> fleeting moment. Oh, it's been a week for me. I still haven't got it anymore. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, 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 there is some youth left. Um, <laughs> it still stirs it's, within me. Yeah, it's been a, just been a couple hours for me as of recording this. But I am Rock the Jake. I am Falero. I'm Game Buddy. And I'm Cyberlink. So the four of us, uh, Sonic gurus, I would like to call us at this point. <laughs> fully humble i don't know if i can live up to that under pressure <laughs> i'll own it i know i can't <laughs> this is true if anybody you're probably the most guru mr wiki man <laughs> but uh we have today is the episode the day where we all discuss this brand new sonic the hedgehog 2 the motion picture that we all got to see which like i said earlier i got to see just a few hours ago uh all of us Americans just saw it within the past couple of days when it came out, and our wonderful British member of the crew saw it a week before us, because that's just how the world works. <laughs> and all of you have probably seen it months before you hear this episode, so yep. <laughs> <laughs> while everyone else got their hot takes out immediately, we let ours simmer for a while. Uh, but maybe they have a bit more depth of flavor because of it, or maybe not. Mostly, mostly because we're going to spoil the hell out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. We want to give you time. Yes. So, uh, like, as you said, full disclosure, we are talking about the movie in pretty good detail. Spoilers uh, ahead if you haven't seen the movie. Um, and you know what? This podcast will will be here waiting for you when you get back, just like a uh, faithful companion or uh, TV dinner. So, yeah, just if you don't want to be spoiled on it, just, just wait. And you really shouldn't be spoiled on it. Like, if you've managed to avoid being spoiled up to this point, actually, that's pretty impressive, to be fair. The new Spider-Mans was spoiled all over the place, like, within minutes of it coming out. The new Spider-Man was spoiled before it came out. That, you know what? <laughs> Good point. But if you did, if you've remained unspoiled up to this point, kudos. And uh, that is one hell of a rock you're hiding under. Today, we are talking all about the brand new Sonic the Hedgehog movie, number two. Uh, I think first on the agenda is we're going to get some of our general gripes out because, you know, this is a positive podcast and we want to, especially with just how honestly really, really good and great this movie is, we want to gush. So let's go ahead and get our gripes out first. Yeah, I I, I want to be clear that I, I didn't want to just like front load the episode with like all of my meanness. I wanted to give more of like my my general impression because I, I rewatched the first one. Um, to remember like what what that one was like and you know how much is has changed with the second one and you know like I said I want to be I, I want to be clear I really liked both of these Sonic movies Sonic 2 especially before we get started everyone out there who really likes the Sonic movies or is just a really big Sonic fan and doesn't want to hear anyone say anything bad about them we understand but the fact is by complaining about the parts we don't like, there's a chance that these guys will listen and make it better next time. So it's important to say, <laughs> to be honest with yourselves about the parts which weren't up to par, especially when it comes to a movie like this, because, you know, maybe it'll pay off. It's fine for it to not be perfect. Did you ever think this movie was going to be perfect? Maybe to you it was. But we're just gonna <laughs> just gonna get the nasty bits out of the way, and it's not even gonna be that nasty. We just have opinions. All right? I mean, look after after that first trailer and my first trailer. I mean, the one for the first movie with the old Sonic design. Anything that came after that that wasn't an unmitigated disaster is a win in my book, <laughs> and that yep. is definitely both of these movies. So, the, the the only things that really bugged me, and and again, I'm I'm being very general with my feelings here, are Sonic is not a stranger to pop culture, but the <laughs> some of the lines they throw in these movies of just like references to things that and and they, they justify it by saying like sonic has like raised himself on earth by watching tv over people's shoulders but this dude talks like he grew up in like the 70s and i don't <laughs> even think the writers of this movie are that old <laughs> um but yeah some of the stuff I, I guess it's probably just like the most broadest american pop culture they can grab and some of them are just like r real groaners. Like some of the uh, the the needle drops, the music is just kind of silly. One of the other things that that just kind of fell 
kind of flat is the musical score like not the the licensed uh, music that pops up but it just it's just not very interesting it seems very um generic yeah it's a generic we, movie score and it's fine it's not yeah. poorly executed like it, it, it is fine um on the positive side we we did confirm um we definitely weren't just filling in with our our damaged Sonic brains, that there is a teeny <laughs> tiny little reference to the drowning Sonic music in one sequence. Yep. Uh, we went and re re listened to it and the, it, it definitely is. So that was nice. <laughs> I just wish they would do that more. I thought for, for a brief bit, um, I thought, well, maybe they didn't want to go through like, approach the the musical artists at sega and have to license that but then tom's ringtone is green hill which is a song that sega does not outright own they had to uh, uh license it from nakamura his name is in the credits and to, to be fair i think that process was a little easier because they use the actual like the lyrical version of green hill in the japanese release of the film Oh yeah, from what I understand, it's in there twice. They use the the English and the Japanese version of that that song that they they came out with just a couple of years or uh, not even a couple of years ago, very yeah. recently, like last year. Yeah, it just would have been nice to have a little bit more of that. Like I, I don't think many people will argue that Sonic is a franchise, regardless of medium, that is uh, oftentimes like defined by its music. Like yep. I think we've said that on this podcast before that regardless of your 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 dips in quality as far as games go usually the music like kicks ass and so <laughs> it was just a little disappointing not to ha see that like represented in the movie mm -hmm. i don't i don't just want them yeah. to necessarily drag and drop songs i you know know from sonic but I, especially after the the Something. <laughs> the anniversary concert where it showed that like even these you know, adorable little 8-bit songs can sound amazing when arranged for an orchestra. It would have been mm -hmm. nice to have a little yeah. bit more of some memorable sounding music. They're going to put in all this fan service and cool references to the game, so it would have been nice to see more representation on the audio front. Like, yeah, these because there's good music in there and it can work. Like you said, it can it can fit. Just maybe even just even if it's just a little nod or lay motif to something in the games. Yeah, just something to make us go, oh, oh, it's the thing. Like they did <laughs> with the drowning bit. But we're yes, yes. Ourselves. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, some of the stuff with the the tertiary characters like drags a little bit, but I definitely didn't think it was as bad as like the first movie, which yeah. spends like a lot of time trying to introduce us to like wade the inept uh sheriff's <laughs> deputy oh gosh, or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah like even um uh maddie's sister rachel like her whole little mini arc uh with her wedding i ended up thinking was very funny i, I loved her she was awesome i i do th wish that we had gotten like a little bit more of a uh kind of button on that at the very end of the film like even just some indication of where things went with that at the end because it's like you know they have that mini arc right in the middle and then they never really follow up on it after that it's kind of like a movie in of itself like it yeah. almost like a movie that interrupts the movie about these two characters and then I, it's gone <laughs> you know? i kind of wanted to see a little more with uh with maddie and rachel and tails's adorable little jansport yeah, backpack yeah, yeah. filled with gadgets <laughs> It is funny. You think that is just a totally pointless. Oh yeah, Tom and Maddie going off, and then turn it into a way to reveal that Gun is now in the Sonic movie yeah. universe. <laughs> just Which, casually. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Guardian units of nations. You know the thing from the yeah. Games. Yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying to remember what the abbreviation stood for in the movie. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just glad now that the vert that the uh, abbreviation we used in sonic f is officially canon and i don't have to worry about like <laughs> finding out oh it actually stands for something else and now we've been decanonized <laughs> we wrote the canon oh man I, I did think it was funny i know no way they were referencing it but yeah they say gun g-u-n and then the whole thing is just a a weird bit from in sonic 06 where they say g-u-n g-u-n instead of gun 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's very funny, very funny. Yeah, the only other time they say gun, gun, gun is in Shadow of the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I, uh, just a, a 
interesting thing I noticed, no actual real life guns in this movie, which yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's it's Every, for kids. Everybody's yeah. carrying tasers. A taser. yeah, tasers are lasers. Tasers are like, you know, they have like uh futuristic super lasers in the in the stinger scene. And yeah, Tails has a little, you know, zappy gun. But I'm like, yeah, fine. That's that's fine. Oh yeah, even the thieves, you know, stealing the armored trick at the beginning have a uh, cobbled together bombs instead of like <laughs> guns to <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I thought that was interesting. Although to be fair, you see what she does to that cake with Tails little like little like uh, yeah. <laughs> pea shooter. That thing is packing. <laughs> but yeah. it's a it's a laser, so it's more, it okay. it's more appropriate, yeah. It could blow your head clean off. It could explode yes. your brains, but you know, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I can't walk down to my local Seven uh, Eleven and pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, you you weird over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to disagree. Yeah, th- I think the only other thing that I took issue with, and you know, it can't really be helped, but I think the CG was not as good this time around as it was in the first one. I think that. I, I'm chalking it up to, you know, pandemic related uh, issues, but it didn't quite feel like Sonic and his friends didn't feel quite as flush with the rest of the world as he yeah. might have in the first one. But, you know. Yeah. And anytime yeah. they had to directly interact with a living human, it, it looked real off. But I, I thought the, the character animation and the faces were 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 very good. Um, that's I don't know. I feel like my brain, especially with movies like this, where I'm like, yeah, these creatures that are on the screen, even though they're trying to look real, are obviously not. Yeah, uh, just kind of. Mm-hmm fill in the gaps but yeah yeah which kind of sucks because one of knuckles's big jokes is anytime he goes to shake someone's hand he accidentally yeah. almost you know snaps their bones and every time <laughs> that happens it's just oh that looks a little rough which i wonder if that doesn't also contribute to i it was i will not say it was disappointing i did not think uh jim carrey's robotnik was as consistent as he was in the first movie i almost kind of wished he'd turn it up to like a notch crazier since he's you know this is supposed to be the dr eggman who was you know yeah. trapped on the mushroom planet who's gone even nuttier and i tell you why you mean by that because like at the end of the first movie like he starts sounding a bit mike pollocky <laughs> i've noticed yeah maybe yeah a little bit like game eggman so it would have been nice for him to lean more into that and to let unless ace ventura but dressed up in a bold cap <laughs> yeah <laughs> it kind of felt like and it kind of felt like they didn't have as many like soliloquies for him to go on like they had in the first movie where he has a lot of where he's making fun of people dressing them down. Yeah. And I could have used some more of that. This one kind of felt like more. And again, it could have been some pandemic stuff. There are obviously lots of like, oh, this is Jim Carrey on a green screen talking to no one. And like they just said, OK, Jim, just go with it. D- say something funny. And, you know, that's where we maybe got some groaners like the why the Limp biscuit line stands out. <laughs> Not that he I came really up with it. that, but like, you know, I just feel like the Robotnik from the first movie might not have said that. But he has some real high spots. Um, he has a really good evil laugh um, towards, the, you know, towards the back half of the movie. Uh, At the end of the day, it's still kind of Jim Carrey doing robotnik as opposed to like you know robotnik yeah and you know that's what they paid for but maybe you know go live the role a little bit <laughs> yeah i just i i wish they would have stretched it a little bit more again yeah. i wouldn't say it was disappointing i just yeah some of the the silly the silly pop culture lines that robotnik says i just didn't i didn't think it fit well especially after rewatching the first movie where he's got a pretty a pretty interesting unique identity as robotnik that i thought they were gonna push a little harder but anyway it it was that was okay that's that's pretty much it that's all of my little gripes my like i said my broad feelings personally i liked it a lot i yeah. i can't wait to get into my my favorite parts with y'all now i mean like well, when we're talking about gripes the mo- most of the gripes i have are with the first one because like it is like the old it, it's a fun movie the first sonic movie but it's barely a sonic it's a movie with sonic in it not really a sonic movie uh, it very much follows the mold of 
uh, CGI or animated character shows up in the real world and has to deal with real things. You've seen the image going around of like all these movies where they have like the live action protagonist and the animated character. At least two of which have James Marsden in them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we all remember Hop. No, we don't. Uh, <laughs> and Hop 2. There was a second one? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Was it as good as this sequel? <laughs> I, you would. Oh, you know, totally up for a BAFTA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, it's, I really enjoyed the first Sonic movie because I, you know, I set my expectations at a reasonable level. And to be fair, they dropped really low when we first saw the Gangster's Paradise trailer. I was like, oh, oh so that's what it's going to be. And at <laughs> the end of the day, it still was that kind of movie. But then, all of a sudden, Sonic looked good, and we were able to forgive a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, there was a lot of charm in it. And, like, by saving the worst part of the whole thing, that terrible Ratman design from the first <laughs> one, which I understand why they chose, but it was never going to look good. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, we understand why, because we literally, I, you know, I, I don't think I can link to it exactly, but... We got, like, rumors and hearsay from people directly connected to it where, like, it was the producers in the studio who do not actually put eyes on the movie making process who mm. said, we gotta make him look like this because kids want it to look like this. And I, I don't know how you describe that. It's just, like, com just completely out of touch, like, cynicism when you're making a, a, a you know, a, a collaborative piece of art. <laughs> It's it's like the newest uh, iteration of the live action Ninja Turtles, because they look so awful to the point that like any of the charm in the movie gets swallowed up by these ugly Shrek looking motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 and it's, yes. it's it's bad. Like they did, they don't need like. We all know they're not there. They don't have to look that realist, hyper realistic, or at least what they think would be hyper realistic if you took a blue speedy hedgehog and put him in the real world. You don't got to do that, and they proved that. They just made some concessions in the new design. They, they, yes, he's still got blue arms. Yes, his eyes are separate now, and frankly, that was you know that makes sense. Yes, yeah. God, the Cyclops <laughs> design would have been something, but it's it's good. It's charming. It's lovely. It's Tyson Hess. Um, yes. Thank you, Tyson, by the way. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, co-producer Tyson Hess. Hell yeah! Yes, Woo! of this movie, the new one. Oh, when I saw that in the credits, I was like, oh my boy. Yeah, heck so, yeah. Oh, well, it. yeah. It's getting the big boy dollars now. I, oh, that was I, super exciting. Like, you know, and I realized I don't 100% know what that means, but it's very exciting <laughs> for this guy <laughs> who every time shows up next to Sonic, uh, you know, does something really good. So <laughs> he's definitely involved to a point. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much of the story he's involved in, but he's definitely like, we knew he was like the, was he like the lead designer for the characters? At least the CG characters. Yeah. And yeah, uh, but like, apparently he's, his fingerprints are all over this and you can sort of tell. <laughs> Does the Sonic fans touch throughout this? Uh, but the, the first movie was acceptable. I enjoyed it. I watched it twice, right as the pandemic was hitting. And then I caved myself up and never watched another movie in the cinema until now. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel that brought you out. <laughs> Sonic movie, eh? Second one. Yeah, let's That let's... was fun. Let's just gush about it. Let's just have some fun. <laughs> I did I did take a few notes, and I just want to point out, as we get into this Sonic 2 movie, <laughs> which the, the first scene I like they do, which we do, we get the nice, the, Par the Paramount logo with the rings, like from yep, the first yep. one, and we also get the cool uh, Sega Sammy uh, intro, uh, logo intro Squash with all the Sega the games. Thing. Yeah. And re uh, I always look for Kiryu's big face right same, over to the It's still, zero, 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 it's still the best appearance of Kiryu <laughs> on the big screen. Oh, man. <laughs> but then we smash straight into the Mushroom World, and then I noticed in the credits, there is a listing for a Rube Goldberg consultant oh, for this cool. first part of the movie. Oh, so like really? Uh, somebody who is who's who's an expert at Rube Goldberg machines for this little <laughs> sequence where Robotnik sets up his what ends up being a coffee maker. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Man, so many it's a very takes. good moment, introductory scene, actually. Yeah. Um, lovely, yeah. love cinematography on this silly, silly scene. Yeah. I did mention I read. Um, 
the prequel comic from IDW, which is a bunch of uh, it's it's mostly just the people that work on the comics now. Um, but it's a, a smattering of stories. And one of them is basically like the like what would happen right before this where Robotnik is figuring out like how he's going to survive on here. And he starts eating mushrooms and <laughs> literally makes and then the mushrooms start eating him. Yeah, the mushrooms start eating him. But yeah, he takes a bite of a blue mushroom and says it tastes groovy. And I'm like, okay, sure. That's a little that's a little edgy of a joke, but okay. Um but yeah, it basically leads straight into this sequence where he is uh he is using parts from his crashed ship from the end of the first movie to build this thing that have uh, just to shoot out a laser into space. Did you notice the uh, the design on the rock that ends like the Rube Goldberg machine was yes. very much the Eggman logo? I, I like that too. Um, there's a, there's a couple of those things that it's it's just a thing like that. So Eggman zaps that thing up. I these dudes in armor that come out with knuckles oh, threw me for a loop right away because I was trying to see, you know, are they a reference to something? And I could only come up with is they're just vaguely like sonic bird shaped helmets you know it's like it's kind it kind of could be a you know a jet the hawk or a, a whatchamacallit but I, I didn't they looked human sized to yeah. me i think they yeah. were like i think they're meant to be aliens because we've got like we sort of like suggest that there are the you know there's all these different worlds that you travel to through the rings so this is just one of them i guess yeah in the uh the the, the, the prequel comic they're literally um uh, like mercenaries that like run across Knuckles and catch him and bring him to Casino Night to fight in an arena, and then after Knuckles wins and gets his winnings in a big bag of rings, he just straight up hires them to help him find Sonic. But uh, yeah, I did. I I liked their helmet designs because it it kind of felt like Long Claw and the Echidnas from the first movie that they like fit right in with that. This weird, I mean, I think they literally say multiverse, <laughs> which is where all of these uh, Sonic characters are coming from. They 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 kind of fit right in for me. But yeah, this is where Knuckles comes in. And uh, Luke, I think you said it after you saw the movie that uh, he is a furry wharf yeah, from Star he is Trek 100% Next red. He is 100% just Red Wharf. Not to be confused with Red Dwarf. That's something no, different. Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> And I, it, it's great. I loved just about every bit of Knuckles in this movie. Yeah, it's a bit Worf, it's a bit Drax, you know, with the literal, literal I yeah. think it's more Worf than Drax, personally, just because of all the honor talk. Yeah, true. Well, I like that they, I mean, it very much felt like the Knuckles that people were interpreting from just Sonic 3 um and sonic 3 and sonic 3 and knuckles like without extra media it's like oh yeah he's this cool strong guy but he's he's a little um you know naive and not really the you know like the hot-headed uh, dummy guy we would get in uh later interpretations that's the way knuckles should be yeah although they still <laughs> managed to get a little bit of that knuckles into this one yeah He's more himbo than dumbass, and I like that more. And that's all they should aim for with our boy Knuckles. Yeah, he is very—he's very large and in charge, uh, standing next to Sonic and Tails. <laughs> oh, he's such a—I like that. This is a great sort of like compromise of some of the designs we've seen. There's definitely some Boom Knuckles in like his. Uh, his size, yeah. but not quite the same. He's not like ridiculously buff. He doesn't have legs for days, but he looks weighty and strong. Yeah, he's got that upside down triangle going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he lifts. He lifts. I do love the way they've sort of like uh, managed to interpret his shoes. Uh, they're Timberlands now. Which oh, I they're great! Want. I want them so bad. <laughs> Tim Leg Lego Timberlands yeah. is what we all want. <laughs> Dude, I want all their shoes. They, yeah, they literally looks like zip ups, except he he flipped the zip up part inside out. It's oh, I like it a lot. <laughs> And they look like something that you would wear if you're doing like all this climbing around and adventuring and such. So mm -hmm. they look hardy, just like yep. Knuckles. Yeah. So it's great. It's a, it's a cute contrast to yeah, Sonic's like real Puma running shoes, and then I love Tails is just uh, they're just little kid shoes. Yeah, <laughs> they've got the little laces and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was also cool to see how um, it, with without like like explaining with words how they how they basically explained with action like 
how Knuckles could actually keep up with Sonic because he kind of like tapped into his own whatever you want to call it power uh, and was able to like you know run almost as fast as Sonic and and you know Tails to that extent too like uh, Tails doesn't as far as I could see doesn't have like the sparky power but like it, it was cool to be able to see through action like because that, that was like something I was kind of thinking of I was just like at least from the trailers like okay knuckles knuckles sparky power like helps him do the punch real good but <laughs> it was cool to see him use it more versatilely uh for like running quickly and i i don't know if this was a direct like nod to it or not but i think i think during the first chase sequence at night when when tails has the sheriff car i think there was a moment where knuckles did a jump up and like kind of glided for a little bit we didn't really see much gliding. I think we saw him sort of like jetting along with his power. Yeah. Uh, but there wasn't. I'd have to watch it again to see, like, be on Glide Watch. Yeah. <laughs> glide Watch. <laughs> There's a lot of nice moments where, especially when he's fighting with Sonic, where Sonic is zipping around real fast. Like um, later when they're they're running straight for the the Emerald Altar, where Sonic just zips right up there, but Knuckles is taking, like, big leaps and, like, doing wall mm. jumps. Yeah. And I thought that was a good illustration of, like, they're different. They have this, uh, you know, this alien superpower, whatever you want to call it. They both have that. But it's it's manifesting in very different ways. Yeah. And it's it, it also kind of just calls back to, like, you know, we all understood that Sonic was the fastest, but like everybody runs fast when you're playing as them in yeah. you know, like yeah. Sonic Three and Knuckles. Um, and you know, even even stuff like I would say that uh, I got some big like Sonic Heroes Team Sonic vibes with the um, the last sequence yeah. as they're all like jogging up next to each other with the the color trails. Yeah. And I, I thought it was a nice little yeah, like you said, it's a nice little uh, it's differentiating these powers that also are kind of kind of similar. It's when you mention the powers, that's what's interesting to me, because um, in the prequel comics, Tails talks about chaos energy. Uh, it doesn't come up in this. They just always call it it's like Sonic's power or their power. But um, I feel like that's what they're aiming for, is that like everyone, all of these cool animal characters have like chaos energy inherent to them, which feels a little over like something I did in my fanfic. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> subtle, but it's kind of um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, yeah th that would definitely uh, you know, considering where this one goes, like lead into other uh, other things they could do in the movies, yeah. tapping it fully, tapping into chaos energy. It, it it makes sense because you know we learned in the movie that um you know like the the owls and the echidnas had basically a great war over the master emerald and while i mean while there's not like a scene saying like and then the master emerald shot lightning and everything and everybody got a little bit like like you could you could kind of like extrapolate and maybe fill in the gaps in your mind a little bit that like yeah like maybe based on where they were and maybe based on the lore of the worlds that they've been in it's possible that all living beings from those particular areas have like a little bit of or like some amount of chaos energy in them because i mean that's what makes sense to me <laughs> i mean it's like we're all powered by electricity they're all powered by like chaos energy that's how i'd like to see it but we're just overly interpreting right now. <laughs> I know. And you say that, and then I was immediately going to bring up the the line near the end after Robotniks absorb the master. I just thought about that, yeah. He tells, is it, is, it, is it Deputy Wade? Yeah, he says, I can smell the electricity in your brain. No, he says it was yeah. stone. <laughs> yeah, it was stone. Yeah. Oh, it oh, was man. stone, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I love stone in stone, both of these stone movies. He's great. Good. What a great henchman. <laughs> yeah. We were just, we were talking about, uh, we've mentioned before, we, we love a good Robotnik henchman. He needs to have one. And I, I like Stone a lot. Stone's even got like a dress up game of Robotnik. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The little, everyone <laughs> you see this the reference of course. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fat man. The, the classic Eggman right before the French made Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I like how the, those those definitely looked like some like uh, concept art, you know, what ifs for for a robot, a movie Robotnik. Look, I'm just mm -hmm. saying if Stone wants to go by the alias Starline in a future film, it would not feel out of place. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, the chaos I know. turns into a duck. <laughs> yeah, Robotnik is still super mean to him in this one, too, and he just doesn't care. He he made it out. I liked the, uh, I didn't even realize, you know, they make a big deal of showing, oh, no, Ro you know, Robotnik falls into the flames, and they're like, he's definitely dead. And then I was like, 
oh yeah what happened to stone he was up in there too and then he pulls the the mask down and he's sneaking out in a gun uniform good for him he'll be back (laughs) yeah don't don't bury our gays (laughs) (laughs) oh yes yeah oh 100 (laughs) percent Like, I, I, I interpret that as being, like, maybe he's actually undercover there to help Robotnik basically sneak his way out undetected rather than just looking for him or getting intel. Uh, who knows? And I mean, you know, like we said, we're we're spoiling everything, but maybe, yeah. oh, you know, he'll he'll infiltrate Gun and look into Project Shadow to revive oh, yeah. Robotnik or, you know, heal him up or whatever uh, robotnik could also just straight up stand up out of the wreckage and it would also work just fine yeah, <laughs> yeah i feel like that's that makes sense too yeah but we're getting to the end of the movie now maybe we should catch up a little yeah bit. yeah <laughs> we're going like we're like so, oh did you guys get this um in our, our screening in the uk because it came out on april fool's day they showed like a really really fast version of the film what that sped through in like a few <laughs> seconds because <laughs> it gave you like the preview and everything it's like sonic the hedgehog rated except pg and it was like did you <laughs> No, so I was like, funny. "Hey, did you enjoy? Did you enjoy that? That's awesome." <laughs> Watching it at Sonic speed is like April Fools. We didn't <laughs> get like, that. Uh, That's fantastic. Oh man, no. Yeah. Before uh, before our screening, it was um, let's see, it was Ben Schwartz, Idris Elba, um, <laughs> James Marsden. I remember there was yeah, James Marsden just did a um, you know, oh before the movie, we just wanted to think, oh yeah, um, um, Tika Sumter. Uh, Yes, Tika Sumter. Uh, there might have been... There was somebody I, else. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, it was Jeff Fowler who was yeah. the other one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's all we... It's just like a little, like, 20-second, thank you for coming out to see it. It, yeah. was, it was cute. Especially Idris Elba trying to be like, you in the red shirt and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was very funny. It was obviously... Like, they were all obviously recorded, like, at different times. Like, probably at just, like, uh, different press junkets were like, oh my god, please come here, we need you for 10 seconds. Um, but it was still very cute. Like, Mar- like Marsden and Schwartz were together, but I think everybody else was kind of just separated. I like how he's like, I'm not Sonic all the time. Uh, we're, we're back on Earth, Sonic. Oh yeah, Sonic's in. <laughs> we get a big, another big title card, Seattle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, th- this was in the preview. I remember people said it then. There are, I choose to interpret, there are some Sonic Adventure oh, yeah. intro I, vibes. I, I absolutely. absolutely think so. Like especially the yes. way they frame like the police cars driving by. Yes, the the police are cha- chasing a an, an armored truck full of cash that's been uh, stolen and they up the stakes by having the poor security guard has been taken hostage so sonic uh it stops the robbery but ends up you know causing quite the fracas with there's bombs involved and uh one blows up in the sewer and again sonic adventure sewer uh you know uh, yeah. great exploding yeah. with geysers <laughs> it's all intentional let's not oh yeah 100 percent <laughs> I really like the sequence of uh, Sonic dismantling the truck as it's driving. That's just yeah, really fun. <laughs> that was really cool. I do like the line from when he uh, he knocks out the the bad guys and rips the the tape off the security guy's mouth. And uh, first, the security guy's like, "Oh my god, a hedgehog!" But then he's he he says to him something like, um, uh, "Why don't you just leave this to the police?" And Sonic says, "That's not what a hero does." <laughs> 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 I like that. It was that was pretty funny (laughs) this this son we establish here that this sonic is several steps away from being the sonic we know because he has no idea what he's doing no yeah Uh, he very much is a young and a very young sonic uh grappling with this stuff thinking he can handle it yeah Uh, that's that's an interesting take for sonic i don't think we see a lot of yeah i i really like this kind of theme through line for sonic of because you know we're all so used to you know starting the game and sonic is the hero and he just knows what to do but mm-hmm. i i like this more i mean they didn't get like psychologically deep with it but i like i still like <laughs> I, I like the some of the exploration of like figuring out you know like as far as like how sonic goes like what it means to be a hero and what that means for him and the fact that it, like we've all kind of said that like this is definitely the most in a way like kid like teen like sonic all guessing he's like 14 15 or so and you know that it makes sense for him to like want to jump in head first but like needing some guidance on like let's figure out why you want to do this and that's like a (laughs) it's kind of like a nice string to like kind of run throughout the movie 
Yeah, it's it's a unique interpretation of Sonic. It's also, like we said, so- Sonic in the games has always been, he's been considered 15 or 16 for like 30 years. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I'd argue most interpretations, he, he always skews uh, older or like much older with something like Boom Sonic. And even like Son- <laughs> Sonic X or like modern, uh, you know, especially like Japanese game Sonic is more of just like an aloof, you know, college dropout (laughs) but this movie sonic is his own unique interpretation that i believe is like a a a kid superhero like learning what he's going to do with the rest of his life yeah yeah i feel like it's like the kind of thing where people are like sonic is always 15 i'm like i don't know if i think he's 15 anymore he seems to have his shit together (laughs) yeah Uh, Far more than any of us. <laughs> Especially, I, I do like how they, they connected some of the, the themes of the first movie where Sonic was scared, you know, he, he was scared to use his powers because as soon as they get found out, he's going to have to jump to another world. And also, he was very lonely, wanted a family. And throughout the course of that first movie, he basically, like, realized, you know, I don't have to run. Um, I can use these powers to help. And also, you know, he found a family. And then we see some of this. He's like, okay, well, how do I take that even further? Now I want to be, you know, a capital H hero. Um, and I, I also like the the go through of, again, how they managed to tie like the, the silly um, uh, wedding tangent into the rest of the movie <laughs> is Tom seems uh, uh, Rachel's fiance's uh groomsmen are like best buds from high school and he's like you know i want sonic to have some some friends that he can relate to and but it's not something that that's like he's he does not share that with sonic it's just something that happens and you see at the end of the movie tom is like oh you know and he literally said you know now my kid has friends and he's i I like that that's a that's a, a a cool way to evolve those ideas throughout these movies I feel that kind of like transitions us into the next part of the story because we sort of get into Tom here, Tom and uh, Tom and Maddie, yeah, and Ozzy the dog, <laughs> yeah, and we get into Tom, Maddie, and Ozzy, the the Wachowski family, uh, which Sonic is more or less an unofficial member of now, and uh, that this is where it's worth pointing out. One of the things I didn't say about the first movie is like. So the first movie is kind of like a Sonic X if it was just Sonic and the human characters were likable in any way. Um, <laughs> that's kind oh, no, of it's, what happens It's here. Sonic X if it was just uh, Chuck and no other human characters. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really good because uh, I really like... When I first heard that Sonic was going to be friends with a cop, I was like, well, at least that's true to the arcade games. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's not necess- <laughs> but it's not necessarily something we want to see. Uh, but no, he's just a he's just a he's just a small town sheriff, basically. And yeah, he's yeah. quite lo- he's quite likable. I could probably go for an whole hour on a, a radical left highway on how that first movie specifically <laughs> points out how inept and useless the Green Hill cops are, and how corrupt <laughs> and dangerous the government is. And at the yeah. end of the movie, Tom realizes that he would be better off as like a social worker for Green Hills. But do I think they did that on purpose? Absolutely no. not. It <laughs> is very funny to me, though. <laughs> it is like. When you try to tell a story with um, compassionate, reasonable characters, you end up with that kind of narrative by accident. Uh, yeah, Funny. you kind of just fall into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, the the pitch for the first one is like he's going to be friends with, okay, a middle aged cop, James Marsden, and <laughs> slash Chris Pratt slash and, Chris oh, Evans. No. If yeah, we go to the early version. <laughs> dodged a bullet ladies and gentlemen with that middle one <laughs> yeah that is a, like i really do have to say i, I know i i complain a little bit of of uh, especially in the first movie the the humans characters can get a little silly but the the actors themselves are incredibly good yeah like yes it would be super easy to like phone all this in and i just do not get those vibes yeah. i think marsden himself is like a pretty charming actor and that that's that comes, what surprised that me through. Because I thought, like, you know, like my main experience of James Marsden is the X-Men movie, so I thought right. it was just going to be yeah. Cyclops kind of, like, sleep <laughs> sleepwalking through his lines here. Yeah. No, he's, like, this really charming guy who you can see how he ended up with this lovely wife, and they're really, they have a good relationship, and it's really lovely. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. If you get past the whole like stereotypical sister-in-law uh, aggression thing, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, that I think they do much better with that in this movie because yes. in that first one, it does kind of come out of nowhere, and she's yeah, she's the angry in-law that hates the husband, and and it feels a bit stereotypical. Yeah, it's a little much. <laughs> uh, yes, but I I I actually really like that they gave her a better role and actually like a proper outlet for her anger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because yeah it turns out her entire wedding was a he- literal operation catfish by gun <laughs> do you <laughs> believe they literally to called s- it that <laughs> yeah <laughs> to survey the wikowskis and capture sonic it's a little on the nose but it's very good anyway <laughs> Yeah, and her, her, you know, super buff, attractive fiancé, Shamar Moore, who, yeah, looks great, except, okay, look, I've, I am currently sport- sporting some questionable facial, facial hair. I've got some mutton chops going. Yeah. <laughs> My man's goatee looked like a war crime. <laughs> I... <laughs> I just, I don't know why they decided to make it a, like, straight rectangle. It looks like a landing strip, except on his chin. And <laughs> I mean, otherwise, yeah, the, the dude looks like a Greek god. Yeah. <laughs> but that facial hair kept popping up and made me very uncomfortable. The dude ends up being working for Gun, and, you know, they, they I, I like they gave her a little scene. Uh, I, I can't believe, my, one of my favorite uh, parts of the movie as far as like the comedy goes is when Maddie and Rachel get a hold of poor Tails's um, adorable little yellow Jansport backpack um, that is full of his uh, little gadgets and just go wreak havoc on some gun agents <laughs> who are I mean they're wearing the vest with the gun logo it's it just blew my mind like they went so hard into that and yeah. uh, uh, crashing the the just married golf cart uh, <laughs> into the stage, walking away from the explosion with a champagne bottle. I thought it was it was very funny, and that a very big step up for that character who was the stereotypical sister in law in the first. Yes, yeah. uh, N- Natasha Rothwell. She she was great. I liked her oh very gosh. much. So <laughs> she's, a, she's a steam stealer of an actress. I have to say, for sure, yes. like, very funny. Like I'm just glad that like it felt like the humans had a lot more to do this time around yeah yeah and it's it's one of those because i've seen people say i'm not going to get into uh i've seen lots of or i've seen some sonic fans like quoting reviews for this uh, is kind of a like they just don't get it and i'm like i you i think that's a waste of time to to <laughs> pick those out uh especially when like i know a little bit about how um publications work and like how they probably just drop that on that poor person's desk because it's a sonic the hedgehog movie for children and but um you know some people complaining about uh, the you know the human characters are still like uh, taking time away from it and i felt that they tied all of this in to where you are cutting between them and sonic characters like very quickly like for every five minutes we get with a person they are cutting straight back to like 10 15 minutes of sonic and tails adventuring and it felt like a much bigger balance and then like i said they they tie it all together with uh you know things i i didn't even um I, i didn't even think were a thing where um uh, Tom is teasing uh, Jojo Rachel, Rachel's daughter, uh, who is the oh, ring bearer, yeah. and uh, palms one of the rings and does the, oh, it's behind your ear. Um, I should have picked up on that, really. And didn't that even was, realize, yeah. you know, Sonic let them uh, save on airfare and went to Hawaii through a warp ring and gave Tom a spare to get back home. And yeah, that is the crux of the wedding sequence where Tom realizes he put the wrong ring back and now can't save Sonic and Tails from the avalanche and has to go ruin the wedding <laughs> do you know what makes that even better is that that bit actually appeared in the trailer with him throwing the ring but that that ended with the ring actually forming yeah. in the trailer this oh, time wow. you just see it fall on the floor it's like oh wait uh, like, there were a lot of scenes in the trailers that were like switched up or ended up being fake outs just to yeah like the difference between you know do i look like i need your power in the trailers versus the mm. you know final film is night and day yeah but it works in both versions uh also ta- he doesn't meet tails on the tornado yeah uh it meets him a lot sooner than that actually that's the end of the movie nearly yeah that was even a nice thing um uh 
I, I picked up on because the 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 tornado is um what is it? It's dragging in Hawaii uh, uh, a banner celebrating yeah. the wedding. Oh, that's the um, plane. Yeah, right? yeah, and I didn't even. Yeah, I I first saw it and I was like. Is that a red biplane? Yeah, and I'm like, I, I guess yeah. that'll come back later. Yeah, I, say, I picked up on it immediately. Like, okay, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> That's a go. They got a reason for it being there. That's good. Yep. <laughs> but except, I don't think it has Sonic's name on it. But it is like a one to one of the original tornado. It's even got the stars on it. It's got like the big kind of F looking thing on it. It does have like was it seven six one? I think it was. It was, it was a number. It's the miles per hour for breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> oh, that's anyway. cute. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's, uh... And I know it's, you know, it's probably like there probably is no real plane. It's probably all computer. But uh, just the fact that it is a it, it is the tornado. But in in real life, I just I really liked it's it, Yeah, it's even got the little star on the back with the, the ring. And yeah. uh, it's, it's it's very it's, cute. It's lovely. And then they destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's also that's also kind of a tornado <laughs> tradition. Yeah, that's yeah. True. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. There are so many little things which I know at the end of the day are literally for you know old fucks like us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to point at the screen and go. But there are like Sonic has a house party right after uh, Tom and Maddie leave and is just trashing the place. He's skateboarding around, and the skateboard is literally one to one the skateboard that appeared in promo art for Sonic Adventure, and I'm pretty sure is also a design of one of the snowboards in Sonic Adventure. Oh, man. Um, like it's not oh kind of like it. It's like no, no, we we checked. It's one to one. Yes. <laughs> yes. In that very same scene, Sonic has shown the ability to uh uh reshape his spikes and he gives himself a mohawk like in the old <laughs> Greg Martin days, in the old yep. cartoon days. Oh, uh, it's so silly. It because it looks just like something silly a kid would do, but we know. Yes, <laughs> we know. <laughs> The old, you know, buzzsaw spin attack Sonic. Uh -huh. I, I noticed a couple of others, like the obvious one being that Stone's um, cafe is literally the mean bean cafe. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you get it? Is also <laughs> Robotnik's, you know, secret base he's been keeping knowing Robotnik will return. Um, mm -hmm. the, on the, the other big one I noticed was uh, Knuckles punches through a water delivery truck that is called the Splash Hills uh, Water Delivery <laughs> Company. <laughs> Which I was should have like, done it, and a bunch of ducks should have flown by. You know, yeah. from the music. Um, <laughs> no, that, that's oil desert. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's ducks in the. Okay, we're getting off track. It's <laughs> cats in the original Sonic Four. Anyway. Yeah, sure. Somebody likes Sonic Four out there. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it's right there. They're like, what do we? What do we put on this water thing? Well, they weren't going to call it the Title Tempest Water Company. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been from, uh, you know, it could have been the Hydro City Delivery Company. Oh, that would have actually yeah, been yeah, good, too. Yeah. I, I concede. Oh, I concede. That's that's actually probably going to, they're probably going to use that, actually, in future. Uh, eventually. <laughs> no, they need to have on somebody's business card, it'll say Hydro City and then a Hydrocity Incorporated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sidestep that little little bit, got little controversy. <laughs> there, there are, and I think this showed up in a trailer. But yeah, there's a break dancing segment where Sonic just does the Sonic Adventure pose. Um, yep. But there, there are so many little things, um, and that's not even to get into like the whole plot revolves around the Chaos Emeralds, like the straight up from the games Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, though not per perhaps not in the way that we I think we expected them to. This is a new take on the law, but uh, I don't mind yeah. it. I think it's interesting. I, it. I like it. It's cool. We we um you know we're not really recapping the plot, but we're all going through it. But yeah, uh, we find Tails uh makes his way to Earth through a warp ring. He's adorable. He's adorable. He's oh adorable. my god, he's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I admit I as someone who. <laughs> is very passionate about acting and voice acting. It was so cool to hear Colleen O'Shaughnessy yes. as Tails in this movie. And I, I you're you're never gonna hear me say that I don't like Ben Schwartz as this Sonic and Idris Elba as Knuckles is great, but especially well they they gave Tails very 
like heartfelt, very emotional scene where he explains his backstory. And it's it's very similar to the one we know from the games is he was teased for his tales. He didn't have any friends until he met Sonic. You know, he thought Sonic was a hero. He wanted to help him. And then he became Sonic's friend. And that just like changed his life. Yeah. And oh. it's so funny that that scene comes after maybe the low point as far as like bad um, needle drop mm. music goes with oh, Uptown Funk, <laughs> which is almost 10 years old. And I mean, oh, come gosh, on, it's like it? a Facebook mom song. I was really hoping... I was really hoping they would stick a Sonic song in there. <laughs> like, that that like would it. have been, yes. But, but They're dancing that they call me Sonic. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hell yeah, oh, hit gosh, it. I'm just imagining the scene now. But, but they follow that up. Like I said, might have been the low point for me with probably my favorite scene. And I, it was just so nice to hear Colleen as Tales. And you could, you could tell it's a character that she has been playing for. God, a long time yeah. and i know she's not even the first second third fourth fifth english <laughs> actor to play she is tales. currently into year eight of playing tales that's amazing yes. and depressing when you think about it because <laughs> passage of time it really did like just make my heart swell yeah. it was such a good performance it was uh, very well written and you could tell she because of the familiarity with the character she just nails it yeah well, stick with me, pal. Earth can be a scary place, but I know everything about this old pale blue dot. Do you really mean that? I mean, not everything, but I watch a lot of Discovery Channel and- I meant about me being your pal. Of course, buddy. <laughs> oh, coming in hot. Growing up, I didn't have any friends. Everyone in my village thought my two tails were weird. Hey. I know that feeling. But then I saw you, the fastest creature in the galaxy. You were weird too, but you were a legend. That made me think maybe being weird isn't so bad. You inspired me to leave my village, to find you and help you in your mission. I'm really glad you're here, Tails. I'm glad I'm here too, Sonic. I, it, it literally was Tails was like one of my favorite parts and I'm glad that they there was a big focus on Tails and it wasn't just like yeah Knuckles is here he's the main the main that's guy. what I was worried was gonna happen <laughs> that's one of two things I was worried was gonna happen one Tails was gonna be like in the background number two they were gonna get someone else to play Tails because oh, gotcha. I was like oh they just brought her in because they needed someone to play Tails in that one scene at the end of the first movie but no she's back I think that one scene is the reason that she did come back because like having her in there for that scene it's like you basically committed to it now you can't yeah. you can't yeah. back out without you know burning up a lot of that goodwill you've been building up with the fans <laughs> yeah can you imagine if it was like Michael Sarah or something Jeez. like that just like came in his tails? <laughs> I mean, the, the cynical part of me says that is part of it is they usually don't do Hollywood stunt casting for like little boy characters that are usually played by um, female actresses. But uh, yes, I also the you know, the hopeful side of me says that, yes, they did that. And I can just say, like, even as a kid, when I didn't understand, like, how acting works yet, it's like I noticed when they would, like, change voices for stuff yeah. like that. Especially, yeah, like you said, they they bothered to give Tails dialogue in that stinger. They used Colleen, and then yeah, they 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 brought her back because um, it, it it works. And um, I was it was nice to see that. Um, I I, I want to track it down. I don't know if anybody knows where I can get it. The the Japanese dub of the movie. I know I did notice when they announced the cast for this one, uh, they did pick somebody different for Knuckles to kind of follow. I think for Sonic, they picked like some, you know, up and coming actor guy, but they just straight up used uh, the actor that's been playing Tails for like the past uh, 15 years in Japan. Yeah. Um, and for I, I hope for that exact same reason, because she's she's great. She's she's done a, a great job. So I, I hope to, to be able to listen to both of those someday. I uh, I wanted to jump in with the that scene, um, the tail scene. Well, the Sonic and tail scene at the uh, at the log cabin, the inn. I I also really enjoyed that scene, and I'll admit now, I might just be a big baby, but <laughs> <laughs> oh no, dude! Yeah, no. I, I was right there. With, I I got a little choked up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like the the part that really got me was um, 
was when they when Tails had already laid down and fallen asleep next to the fire. Sonic put the uh, Sonic put the blanket on him, and then like, and I, I was already going like, ah. And then like when Tails is Tails, I'm, I'm actually gonna get a little choked up right now. Just saying, but <laughs> it is, it is so cute. you just saw it today, uh, dude. Yes, yeah, but, but when but when Tails is both Tails covered, Sonic, I was just like, <sighs> <laughs> there was that moment yeah. of like, oh yeah, Tails used to be this adorable. Yeah. Like, that's the the fluffy Tails I remember. Uh, literally fluffy. I, I know we have talked about it before that Tails is is a character that, um, like Amy, like Shadow, now, that it, it's hard to nail down where, where his character is. And I think this, and it's because it's an introduction, so we get all that heartfelt, like, yeah, Sonic, you're my hero. And it's like, but now you're my friend. No. Is that we get both of those like, yeah, he's the the cute little boy genius um, because he's got his I love his little gadgets. They did such a good job designing them again. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite parts in the games where he has this like Eggman. He has this tech that does this great stuff, but it still looks like, uh, you know. A, a preteen put it together. Yeah. It's like a and little it says, And it says Miles Electric on it, by the way, and just in case oh, you're cool. wondering. I didn't see that. Like, all the tech in the movie really, like, well matches the aesthetic of, like, the Miles Electric. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um, but yeah, also, he's he's a lonely little kid that needed a friend. Yeah. And uh, I, that just worked really well in this movie to be able to we combine that together. We got away from that a little bit. Uh, this does feel like a nice sort of meeting of the tales is. Yeah. The tales. Sonic's little brother. And I feel that's maybe the part of it. It's like, because Jeff Fowler is obviously a big fan. He's like constantly saying how much he loved the original games he's probably sort of thinking his tales as like the little brother playing with the second controller Aww. on sonic <laughs> 2 <laughs> and that's kind of what you have here because tales represents all those little the little the little bros yeah it, it, uh, yes. and i love that it really is kind of a perfect distillation of the character yes yes i i, I was gonna say it seems like it is time for uh to to kind of unite those those two eras of tales you can have you can have the the funny little pixel brain little brother and also the boy genius with all the gadgets and have it still work as a coherent character yeah uh because they did it i mean i would say they did it in this movie and it's it's great like i i think it might be my favorite part of the movie is is tales tales is so good (laughs) also he can fly he can fly just like in the games and do you know how they explain it they don't. It's just but something they don't he does. He's an alien. That's <laughs> literally all you need. Yeah. I love how it looks like a, a like a cotton balls on a string being twirled yeah. around really fast, and I, that's how it's supposed to look. So we, you know, we've we've talked a good amount about both Sonic and Tails' characters. Sonic, you know, from both movies, and Tails from this one. And we've talked about Knuckles a bit, but I feel like this is a good spot for us to really like talk about Idris Elba as Knuckles and Knuckles' characterization in the movie, and just have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, because we we mentioned that, that Sonic and Tails do hop a warp ring to Siberia because Tails helps him uh, look at the map that Longclaw gave him with the bag of rings. And it lights up, and she and oh. yeah, I was about to say he literally calls her his Obi Wan Kenobi in the first film. Yeah, if she had you know eight mice and a beak, and <laughs> she literally does, and you're my only hope hologram, <laughs> and explains the origin of the Master Emerald. Lots of movies do this, um, where they suddenly cut to like uh, an animated sequence, and I'm like, that's the coolest part of the movie. Should have done the whole thing. <laughs> like oh, yeah, two D animated, yeah. It looks so good. So cool. I love it. Um, but explains that, uh, yeah, Knuckles is a uh, Echidna tribe, uh, forged the Master Emerald with the Seven Chaos Emeralds. Which I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. I was yeah. worried they weren't yes. going to be. Yeah, it, it was a little out. unclear right away. I thought, okay, they just forged one big emerald. And I'm like, okay, that works. Whatever. You don't need all seven. But no, they forged them into this master emerald to like focus all their pa- into the ultimate power. We hear that several times. Ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> We see that, uh, you know, one of the echidnas absorbs the emerald and it gives them, uh, you know, unlimited power, the ability to turn your thoughts into reality, which, uh, you know, again, is is almost straight out of the a line straight out of the games. And yep. is yeah. a, a, OK, I both love and hate this, that as they're explaining this, Dwayne, the stupid uh, police deputy, 
uh, they say, you know, the emerald has the power to change your thoughts into reality. And he says, just like the Stave Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters, <laughs> which I genuinely <laughs> laughed at until he says it again later. Know, and yeah. then I'm like, yeah. okay, well, now it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> he should have cut it, snipped it. <laughs> uh, but I thought, uh, yeah, what a great way to explain how the Chaos Emeralds work, except just like, well, they're all powerful. And they, they turn you into a Super Saiyan. <laughs> but no, I thought that was great because um, you can connect the dots later. It's like, okay, well, why does that work for, you know, Sonic? And I would say, well, because he wanted to be a superhero oh, at the beginning yeah. of the movie. Yeah, there you go. And so, oh, man, it's <laughs> it's good. It's good. I love that. Yes. that is, I, they literally take a silly line from the games that that uh, almost doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Like, the, the Emeralds have our, the power to, you know, make our feelings into real <laughs> <laughs> and actually explain it really, uh, really well. Um, but, yeah, so Longclaw finishes that up by saying that, you know, the owl of uh, the owl tribe thought, well, there's no possible way that this will turn out well. So they steal the master emerald from the echidnas and seal it away forever because nobody should have access to that type of power. And it's worth noting right now, no mention of Angel Island or the float, the, you know, a floating island controlled by the master emerald. This is all, this is its own lore yeah. in its own way. Yeah. We, we see, you know, Knuckles explains, we even see Knuckles dad, but we don't hear any other names. He doesn't call him. I do think it was intentional that they did not go into what happened to the Echidnas and Longclaw in that final battle because it's like, you know, Knuckles says he's the last one. You know, everything we've seen says that, you know, everybody died, but we don't see any bodies. There is really nothing to straight out confirm that everybody is really gone. And I think that figuring out what actually happened to Longclaw and the Echidnas is going to end up being like a major thrust of whatever the knuckle series for paramount plots ends up being i just wonder if it's going to be like long claws like i have no other options <laughs> <laughs> and like, just go supernova <laughs> i have a gun <laughs> oh my god can you imagine i've been hiding this from sonic all this time i did not want to, to see this <laughs> <laughs> yep, they took the guns out of this movie so they can waste their one uh, PG-13 rating on that episode. Yeah. <laughs> the TV yeah, show. I, uh, grabbing a, uh, handling a gun with her feather. Look at her wings. <laughs> her actual owl ass wings. Like, I, I, ha I have a theory about what they're going to do on that front, but I'm going to save that for when we inevitably start talking about what comes next. Uh, like we said, we do get a backstory on that, how Knuckles is... Uh, family and tribe created the master emerald um and uh, tales and sonic have been led to this uh owl shrine um that holds a compass that the uh, the map spoke of that should lead them directly to the hiding place of the master emerald and that's where knuckles and robotnik bust up in and uh try and take it from him and we get to see uh robotnik's new badniks that are still mostly very like plain like white apple products but no some of them straight up look like buzz yeah. bars and he's yeah. got he's got an eggmobile i i love it it looks great i thought like the eggmobile was something he was gonna like make on his time like away like being you know the crazy mushroom planet he was like making weird stuff but it turns out these things have been in storage this whole time so he always wanted to fly around <laughs> in this big weird yeah uh, semicircle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that that's where we got we get reintroduced to stone who flips the switch on his uh his coffee shop and reveals it's just been robotnik's uh robotnik's base and waiting for when he knew he could come yeah. back and I, it was in the trailers but it's it's super well done when he just screams he's back he's back uh <laughs> when he gets the message from robotnik <laughs> i love that he has his own little micro fandom that came out of the first movie <laughs> and i'm part of it <laughs> stone stands it's and a lot of people who just really ship that yes <laughs> yes that's valid, that's valid as hell and that includes Stone himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even uh, even in an interview, Jim Carrey said that he wasn't like opposed to the idea. So, 
Yeah, Rob Robotnik might be, though, because I feel like Robotnik probably... I don't even know if he has any interest in other human beings Ro Robotnik was sooner, other than yeah. using them. That first movie, he straight up, like, talks about how it's going to be so much better when he takes over the world and does away with the rest of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> and in this one, he mentions that he he's at least going to keep humanity around, but they're all going to serve as his robots. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, he just doesn't want to be tied down. Maybe yeah. some kind of robot transformation machine. Robot is Sizer. Who knows? Mm, about Sizer? That's some crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we get the cool snowboarding scene. I will say, like looking at the mountain, the mountainsides when they were like first entering. I I think it's just because like Death Stranding has etched a part of my brain, a part of itself into my brain. But like I looked at those mountains, and I was just like. What if Sonic and Death Stranding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just about to say this would have been a great place instead of like a whatever goofy song they use, but to drop in some like uh, ice cap Sonic, you know. Yes. Put some low roar in there. Yeah, man. <laughs> we could use, um, we could use. Well, they could have, they could have like uh, licensed Hard Times by the Jetsons. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Go completely in the other direction. Direction, yes, and put that song in there. Happiest oh, days of my life. <laughs> yep. Oh man. I, I do love this sequence. This one is a big like man, I wish the music was a little more like exciting. Throw some yeah. guitar licks yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah, it's it's literally ice cap with a little bit of city escape since Sonic is using a little piece of scrap. Yeah. It's actually reminiscent of what the original plan for um Ice Cap in Sonic 3 was yeah. gonna be. Because originally Flying Battery was gonna come first and you were gonna like knock out the the door to the escape hatch you get out of and use that as a snowboard. Oh that's cool. Uh so, so. I'm pretty sure in um it's either Angel Island Revisited or Sonic 3 Complete, like that is an yeah. option. Like yeah. somebody went in and resprited it. I think maybe even in both. Yeah, most likely. That's neat. Yeah, this is where, uh, you know, we mentioned that Tom rescues them from the avalanche. But uh, yeah, this is another, this is a really good Knuckles part. Because at the end, um, he Sonic tosses the compass to Tails and tells him to get away. And instead, poor Tails gets uh, knocked out by these uh, badniks. And uh, Sonic rushes straight to him instead of the compass. And Knuckles very much notices that because it was a very honorable action. Yeah, yeah it's that first <laughs> moment of doubt. He's already seen Robotnik treats stone like crap. Yeah. Like I think I'm gonna ditch stone. <laughs> Dishonor. <laughs> this is how I roll. Like, oh, that's so good. Um, oh, and so man. Knuckles, you know, Knuckles might already be thinking that man, maybe Robotnik isn't a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing about this, because like, uh, I don't think at any point Robotnik like tries to pass himself off as a like a really good person. Yeah. Um, does he, I think he feeds Knuckles some, but like Knuckles already know, like already is after Sonic. This isn't like, yeah. oh, that Sonic has come to steal the Chaos Emeralds and all that. It's not that sort of uh, Yeah, no, he's, he just wants to find the Master Emerald. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is while Knuckles mentions the Master Emerald that Robotnik, because first Robotnik just wants Knuckles to help him get back to Earth, because he tells him, well, I know where Sonic is, and then he hears about this ultimate power in the form of the <laughs> Master Emerald, and uh, it is a very good uh, mug reaction from Robotnik here, where you just see the evil little wheels turning. <laughs> he doesn't even have to, you know, spell it out, it's like a nope. He's going to get that emerald. But it's always a tentative sort of partnership here. It's never like, oh, Robotnik, you're a good guy, and I'm going to follow you because you're doing good things. Like, yeah. <laughs> so Knuckles doesn't seem like an idiot. It's a tentative alliance, and I quite like that. Yeah, when it when it falls apart at the end, it's definitely oh. because Knuckles realizes he's not only a bad guy, but yeah, he is a dishonorable rapscallion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rapscallion. <laughs> I couldn't help but think, and before anyone asks, no, they are not archived or written down anywhere, but poor Tails, like, getting hurt and then spending, like, the next ten minutes or so, like, unconscious, like, he's gonna be okay, right? It's so something that, like, uh, young me, when I was writing fanfics, did, like, all the time, because mm -hmm. that was just peak drama. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, a good character, like 
falls in a coma or gets hurt or needs like a you know a magic flower to wake back <laughs> up and it was very but it was it was good character moments for all the cast because even tom or maddie are like oh you know who's your who's your new friend and he's like it's tails he's hurt oh no we're immediately invested <laughs> <laughs> but, you know you see I, I see that cute little fox and i'll be oh, like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> see okay oh no he, uh, he's got a boo boo <laughs> oh no it's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, like how Rachel said, though. Oh, there's two of them now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like I said, they give they give her a lot of really fun lines, yeah. and um, oh. yeah, this is where it's revealed Gun is now a thing. They've ruined this poor woman's wedding and possibly the rest of her life. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all thanks to the Olive Garden guy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They. <laughs> I'm glad that they leaned into the joke. <laughs> Yeah. There is still some really awkward product placement. Like, they mention, like, oh, enjoy the wedding in Hawaii at the Four Seasons Hotel. <laughs> and, like, Sonic calls him later and says, hi, are you having fun at the Four, Four Seasons, Seasons Hotel? <laughs> but then they bring back the Olive Garden guy, because that's what he was from the other movie. They, yeah. they lean into it, and I think it's funny. <laughs> he even, like, call somebody and says, like, cancel my five o'clock at Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, the guy is called Commander Walters, but he's the Olive Garden <laughs> yeah. guy to us and the yes. characters of the movie, apparently. Oh, man. Also, if they want to go that direction, they could uh, give him a messed up eye and make him the commander from Shadow I was just thinking yeah. that. He's literally a commander, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be Commander Hightower, or whatever they called him in Archie. Because he never really had an actual name in the game, Commander so. Olive Garden. <laughs> mm, that was interesting to think about, isn't it? Mm. They they turned like probably the most awkward product placement next to Zillow in the first movie yeah. into like a pretty funny joke. Yeah, <laughs> just imagining if in the next film we see him like eating unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's always got a basket somewhere. <laughs> he's in his full like gun SWAT gear. <laughs> he has a holster, but there's a breadstick in it. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a gun. So <laughs> I will also say. The priest with the taser inside the Bible is probably one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. gags. Yes, and then he does the cross afterwards. <laughs> yeah. He does. He does the sign. Oh that, man! Yeah, he doesn't. Dr- he doesn't draw it right away, but he just lets you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, he on feels it. bad about it. Too. He's like, yeah. God forgive me. <laughs> this is such a silly movie. It, it is, but I, I think that's one of the best gags in the movie. Yes, absolutely. Robotnik and Knuckles using the, the compass, which has... It's a cute little design. It's obviously got the tiny little Chaos Emeralds in around yeah, the I like Master that. Emerald. But they do use it to unlock this hidden temple zone. Oh. <laughs> which is, you know, a couple hundred miles off the coast of um of where our heroes are. And they go down into this labyrinth <laughs> to yeah. find yeah. Uh, the master emerald. And we and it's uh, both a literal and um well <laughs> it's a, a sonic labyrinth. It's labyrinth zone. No, it's it's not Sonic Labyrinth. He doesn't have stone shoes. <laughs> that game's bad <laughs> so um but it's it's rather cool um seeing like this blatant labyrinth it's got there's a little there's an amalgamation as we pointed out earlier but it's mostly labyrinth zone of all the owl heads yeah and, uh, yes the gargoyles and things and the yeah. crystals against all odds more subtle sonic 4 references yeah <laughs> like it's it's mostly labyrinth but it's got a little bit of lost labyrinth marble uh maybe even a teeny bit of hidden palace mm-hmm. i mean hidden palace definitely comes in a little bit later i think but uh yeah yeah i saw um some people were pointing out like s- literally the 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 cut and sub- subsequently restored sonic 2 hidden palace is what this this master emerald shrine uh looks a lot like yeah it really does well, Sonic has to get to the uh, the temple, and um, he does it in a really cool way. Yes, huh? he does. <laughs> this whole sequence is really good. Because it's worth noting, like, one thing they help to establish in this one is Sonic's distaste for water. He can't swim, he falls in the water earlier, and I always like that in my Sonic stuff, because that's the Sonic experience. <laughs> 
Yes, <laughs> it's hating it, water. <laughs> it gives him a unique character weakness. Character flaw. Um, mm-hmm. Because you would think it, it's it's almost you know you would think well how could it be that big of a deal and then you know you get to the first water level in a Sonic game and realize it's a very big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they they do a really cool sequence here. It almost reminds me. I remember as a kid when I first saw the Incredibles and the sequence oh, where Dash yeah. is running across the water. I immediately thought, man, that's what it needs to look like in a Sonic movie. And that's what mm-hmm. this looks like, where he, you know, Tails is still hurt. He he's he's gotta go get the emerald before uh Robotnik and uh Knuckles get to it. And the only way he's gonna do that is running in a straight line across the ocean uh to the island. And it looks really cool. You know, we were talking about some of the CG looks wonky, but this whole sequence looks really neat. And they apply realism to it, because even if you're fast enough to be able to run on water, uh, if there's waves, you're not going to have a very fun time, and that's quite it's quite a scary scene. I know, and they do, they do like a, a smash to black and a fade up, it's like, and he wakes up on the, the shore of the island, and I'm like, whoa, that's <laughs> was a little scary. <laughs> yeah. God, as much as <sighs> he literally says he's got to go fast, and it was... A cool line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it, it was forced in the first movie, but I feel like it worked here. And let's just, let's just get it out there. Gotta go fast is, an, is a line that has never, did not originate in the Sonic games, despite what people think. No. It is from the Western song, the theme song, to uh, the Sonic X anime. And it just somehow became part of the public consciousness of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I never liked it. Never. And do you know why I don't like it? It's because people will say that as like a reason for why they, they're not having a good time with the original Sonic games. It says, but I've got to go fast, but it keeps punishing me for going fast. Like, no, you don't have to go fast. You've got to earn your speed. Ugh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, people complain about like, uh, oh, you know, I hate the self-aware humor in like the modern Sonic games, but gotta go fast came from making fun of the stupid four kids theme song and Mm -hmm. then i want to say gotta go fast also came like around on the internet at the same time as like the sanic drawings Uh, and all that and i mean talk about your you know your or metafiction uh, 20 layers of irony stuff that that's why i've never liked it but it, it definitely has, it, it has been around so long that it's kind of bent back around into being like kind of a, a genuine thing. It's like, yeah, Sonic does go fast that I can let it go in this. Just you these know, days. Yeah. Don't try and tell me it didn't start off as ironic and taking a piss. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think this is where is, is this where we see Tails is starting to wake up? I think Tails already woke up like when Sonic was gone. Yeah. Like okay. He just realized, okay. yeah. Yeah, so- Sonic left without him because Tails was still too weak at the time. And, and Sonic was also feeling bad about the fact that he he feels like he was part of the reason why Tails got hurt. So he's like, I got to do this on my own. And then as soon as he runs away, uh, Tom and Maddie both yell out Sonic's name. And then that's when Tails wakes up. Like, he's in trouble. Sonic makes it to the, the labyrinth. And I, d- I d- also do think it's funny that we, we get some of Knuckles and Robotnik making it through these traps. Yeah. Um, but then instead of like, you know, showing Sonic zipping through and getting through him, he literally crashes through the ceiling into, <laughs> yeah. into, into the, the Emerald Chamber. And, yeah, uh, he labyrinths his way down because he's dealing with all those horrible traps that we all had to deal yeah. with when we played <laughs> Sonic 1. Yeah. Seeing him falling down the running water uh, element parts. That's that was just, cool. It takes you back. It takes you back. It does. It's yeah. very good. It's where we get one last skirmish with Sonic and Knuckles doing the cool, like I said, the cool ways to show off their different powers where Sonic's zipping around real fast and Knuckles is, uh, you know, doing wall jumps and we get the nice trailer shot. And uh, that was something I also liked is they, they did a good job of these characters are moving quickly, but like pulled out the you know, the, the digital camera. So like we can actually see what they're doing. There wasn't a lot of like shaky cam. No. You know, oh, these characters are fighting, but you can't see it. And uh, of course, this is where the big Robotnik heel turn is because he just tiptoes up to the altar and grabs the emerald. And Knuckles knows immediately that uh, <laughs> he has been taken advantage of and was betrayed. Yeah. He even says like, I thought you were my friend. Wait! 
Wait! That wasn't the deal! Oh, you poor, naive creature. It's not your fault. A more advanced intellect would have seen this move coming a mile away. Or 1.6 kilometers. But I trusted you! You are my friend! <laughs> I'm sorry. That just hit me funny. <laughs> That's where he has his big laugh. Um, that big Ace Ventura. <laughs> I wanted more big, big Robotnik laughs. Give me more. It, it was like it was like Jim Carrey laughing, then Ace Ventura, then the Grinch laughing, and then he finally went back to <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he kind of ran the gamut on that one. Yeah. Um, this kind of brings us to one of the major differing points in the law here, because there's always going to be a difference in law between yeah, this yeah. and the games, but what we have here is Robotnik is a, essentially using the power of the Master Emerald in himself, and uh, a f thing in the games is, like, humans could never do that. Like, the Master is, for some reason, the Chaos Powers would only ever actually directly work with Mobians, more or less, for lack of a better term, with the animal people. But here, it's something that he can use himself without using, like, technology. It, it is funny, just a small tangent, you say Mobian, but then I believe uh, one of y'all pointed out that the junior novelization of the Sonic <laughs> 2 movie, um, Knuckles calls Sonic a child of Mobius, so yeah. it's ah. back in continuity, baby! <laughs> I well, think so. Anyway. Wouldn't that make him? What, wouldn't that make him a child of Mobius, or is he from another planet? I don't. Know. It's it's we ambiguous. Yeah. I might have to read that little book just to see, uh, you know, where where they go with it. But I but don't know. Mobius is there somewhere, <laughs> yeah. and I'm yeah. happy because I do like the name <laughs> Mobius. I think it's pretty cool. And this is the perfect continuity to use it in, where there's, yeah. you know, multiple multiple alien worlds here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not just two worlds. Oh yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I do want to say uh, when Eggman does get a hold of the uh, the Master Room World, and right before he like teleports away from the temple. He he very loudly proclaims chaos is power. And yes. That, yes. yes, and that made me think of the uh, the the chant, like the incant. Well, not yeah, chaos but, is power, power yeah, rich from the heart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, I was just like, oh, hey there. <laughs> I, yeah, he does straight up like uh you know like we we got in the backstory earlier he absorbs the entire emerald into his body and like his his costume changes to green highlights and he gets green energy and his uh, even his goggles change from a red oh, yeah, tint to do. a green tint and then he like teleports away <laughs> he, he, can, he has controls, controls away yes, if you will yeah oh. He is super robotnik. <laughs> the supreme uh, high robotnik. <laughs> the supreme yeah. high robotnik or the robotnik who gained the power of the Chaos Emeralds in Sonic the Comic. Yeah. And just all these little cool things that yep. I like to see represented in my Sonic. But he still he does still have his clothes on, so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, still step up, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the also the uh, I think we got one in the first movie, is that correct? That Sonic calls him an eggman. Yeah, uh, there were a couple times in the first, but I think he definitely did it more here. He he continues it in this movie. Just another nice, uh, you know, again, fits right in with this continuity that, yeah, yeah of course, a, a, a military contractor who's perpetuated war crimes named Dr. Robotnik uh, would hate being called Eggman by this little blue furry kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the reason he calls him Eggman is because all of his little robots are right? yeah. eggs. Yeah. Like he's egg shaped. Yeah, he does have an obsession with egg shaped things, which is, I mean, I also is also very like Bible robot. Robotnik, STC mm. Robotnik, I like that. Look what crawled out of my egg sack. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which is a hell of a line. Um. Yeah, after he spoils the end of Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird I, ass scene that was. That is actually the stuff I like in that first movie, is just the long rants, you know, connected to nothing. <laughs> So yeah, he is super robotnik, and he zips back to uh, Green Hills, yep. isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, right in front of the Mean Bean. And he looks, and like, there is there is this sort of like feeling of, he doesn't quite know how to control this power. It's almost like too much for him at first. He's sort of like adjusting to it. And there's this weird filter to they put to his voice, and he looks like almost like a million miles away at first. It's like he just appeared almost by instinct rather than by intent. It's yeah. Yeah. quite wild. Yeah, that is... I, I wanted to shout this out. Um, I did see, I think uh, I saw some people mentioning how... 
some of the especially the like sonic tails and knuckles sometimes their voices aren't uh properly mixed to sound like they're in the same environment as the humans um but i thought some of the sound design was actually really nice on this movie like this Mm -hmm. final sequence which has lots of giant robots and super powered hedgehogs zipping around actually really stood out to me as like nice sound effects and not just like generic cartoony crashes and whatnot i think that kind of brings us to the giant robot yeah yeah essentially like luke you actually called what how he did this i Uh, did yeah conversation about this when we saw the trailer bringing up the like we saw like a tornado in the trailer of like various not that's not the plane an actual physical <laughs> tornado of uh various bits and pieces of tanks and planes and stuff helicopters and stuff sort of like twirling together and robotnik forms like a giant robot around himself which i feel is like the most literal death egg robot because it's like a combination of the death egg and the giant robot from sonic 2 because it's like this massive cocoon around him that he seems to control, almost like a G Gundam sort yeah. of like situation in the middle. It definitely feels like a blend of the traditional Death Egg robot and the giant Eggman robo from Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, mm. it's quite cool. Uh, when, when they're both, when both he and Agent Stone are in the head, I love how at first he gives that command to Stone, asking for I think the rockets. And he says, you didn't read the manual. And then they come back like a few minutes later and Stone holds up the manual. And it looks like a classic like Sega game case with like, <laughs> it, it says like Robotnik. It's got yes. the, the, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's got the, the, the white on black oh, grid so and cool. everything, just like the old <laughs> Master System and some of the Genesis uh, aesthetic. It's That was so stupid. I love it. <laughs> I, I loved it. it. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> It's just this is the way he brings it up. Like I read the manual, <laughs> <laughs> and so he's holding it very proudly. <laughs> and you know what? The manual even has Sega's logo on there. Yeah. Well, fair enough. I mean, it's obviously one of those because there was a prop. There was a physical prop. It's like, okay, <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. He didn't just say it. He, you know. Yeah. No, they they committed to the bit. Yes. <laughs> and everyone, everyone watching, not just us, gets it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Don't you? laughs> definitely um i do like uh all of robotnik's tech the i I feel like the look has evolved in this movie too like his gloves are very much uh there's more like highlights and stuff to them yeah and um i I actually like that for this version of robotnik that he has these i mean they're not power gloves they do kind of vaguely look like um uh you know uh genesis mega drive controller buttons on there um, but I do, I do like the look of all his technology in this one. And it's, it's less generic than it was in the first movie. But yeah, this big robot, it is like, God, two, 300 feet tall, it looks like. And it's a good thing we've gotten several aerial shots uh, cementing that Green Hills is like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's lots of forest and mountains for this thing to stomp around. And it's not murdering everyone in the town. <laughs> Although I did, you know, he absorbs all of the, the, the gun vehicles that pull up, the, the weapons of war, and we see several shots of soldiers, like, jumping out of them, and then he absorbs this train, and, man, I didn't see that conductor yeah, no. bailout, oh, no. so. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't worry, I can see the parachutes moment. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's automated these days. Don't worry, it was, a, it was an AI train, there was no conductor. Yeah. yeah. I, love the, I love the moves that this thing does, by the way. It's got some very silly moves, yes, like where he's doing the bit with the fingers and it's like running along like a person. And he's got oh, like the so snot cool. rocket cannon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The it's all so great. immature, but it fits this version of Robotnik so much. It does. Yep, the aforementioned uh, mus- the stash smash. <laughs> the oh stash my god, the stash smash. Yes. Yep. <laughs> It's it's very good. It's so yeah, I mean, it is it is great to see this. It is only slightly looks different than the one that is straight up out of the game, or we've seen like the three D versions and like Sonic generations of this Death Egg robot. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does reminiscent of the Sonic Two one, just without like the spiky fingers. 
Um, but it's got like if you look at the shoulder pads, the shoulder pads are straight up those yellow things from yeah. the game. <laughs> it's got some really nice uh, references, like the the jets on the arms that let him punch really hard. Yeah. And oh, it, yeah, you mentioned like Gundam, like it is straight up like giant robot stuff. Like I mean, G Gundam so specifically, cool. where he's piling it up by standing in the middle, <laughs> <laughs> and then around. just like bounces flying around the place and using his leg as an electric guitar and stuff. And <laughs> all this Jim yeah. Carrey physical <laughs> comedy nonsense. Yes. Yeah, there there we got some guitar kicked in there. <laughs> finally. <laughs> oh, finally. Uh, the face also is very reminiscent of um, the, the, the Sonic Generations design of the Death Egg as well, with the big mouth as well. Yeah. So yeah, this really is an amalgamation. This is this is where we get Sonic and Tails and uh, Knuckles. Who we, we kind of skimmed over. Sonic and Knuckles have like a heart to heart after the temple is collapsing. After Egg, uh, Eggman teleports away, and this is where we get the the uh, the drowning sequence where there is the tiny little bit of a reference to the the Sonic drowning music that really yep. really made me light up <laughs> in the theater. Especially enjoy that little reference because it's one of the only ones you get yeah. <laughs> for the music. But we do. Sonic of uh, Sonic is a true hero and rescues Knuckles, and and they have a heart to heart on the beach talking about. It's how. important to mention he does suck up that air bubble. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, like literally. You think I think you see some bubbles flying past, and you think, "Oh, I get it," and then he just does it, just like the game. <laughs> <laughs> Gives him that extra little bit. These are all these are all the references that everyone like everyone who's played a Sonic game yeah. is like, oh, it's the thing, it's the thing. Oh yeah, there's so much. It's the thing. It's <laughs> everybody like holding popcorn and pointing, and popcorn flies everywhere. It's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we are all Leonardo DiCaprio doing the yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I understood that reference. Uh, this is another a very good like heart to heart between these two you know animated characters that lands really good you saved me don't talk to me i'm not in the mood how dare you attack me in my hour of sorrow why did you save me because you saved me first which clearly (laughs) gave you a tactical advantage i do not understand it wasn't a tactic i couldn't just let you die why I've been trying to destroy you since the moment we met. Because being a hero isn't about taking care of yourself. It's about taking responsibility for other people. Hmm. Wise words. An ancient earth proverb? No, sir. That's a Bukowski family special. I got it from a guy in a rowboat. Someone who means a lot to me. He he repeats the speech that he kind of blew off from Tom earlier in the movie where he talks about being a hero is about taking responsibility for other people, for your actions, for other people. And he's realized that, yeah, he's he's become a hero because he, he cares about cares about these people in the world above all just being a cool dude. And <laughs> of course, <laughs> Knuckles thinks that is very honorable. Mm-hmm. So do we get to talk about it? The really, really cool part during the battle, near the end of the battle. Do we get to talk about it now? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they all are our, our, our three are, you know, Team Sonic uh, is attacking the giant Eggman robot with the tornado. Like we said, the perfect one to one beautiful recreation of the tornado. And it immediately gets shot down and explodes, you know, just <laughs> like the real tornado. <laughs> it's almost comically explodes like tails makes it out but it's i mean it is like yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of like comical explosions in this movie especially the, yeah. the arch in, in, in hawaii <laughs> uh but they they have a huddle up about how they're going to uh take this thing down before sonic realizes that he is the weak point because eggman just hates him so gosh darn much <laughs> And then we get a cool, like, uh, I, I think I said, I can't remember if I said earlier, we get a cool, almost uh, Team Sonic from Sonic Heroes with the color trails where they're all running in yeah. tandem. Yeah. And talking about their plan and how Sonic's going to be the distraction and the uh, the other two guys will uh, find the weak point and get into that cockpit, which is which is what happens. Tails uses his, uh, uh, his hologram gadget again from the dance battle to... That's a cool effective. new feature for Tails to have, actually. I kind of like that. As much as I think we were all a little, like, not super 
keen on the dance battle. It does a good job of setting up a lot of the stuff that comes in later, especially during this part. Yeah. What? Oh yeah. Knuckles just straight up punches the master emerald out of uh, Eggman. Yes. yes. Big Sonic <laughs> three energy right there. Yeah. So cool. Just <laughs> it's it's a cool shot. It is. I mean, if you asked me how to frame that shot, I would have done it the same way, which is the <laughs> zoom up. You know, super slow mo, and it just goes shooting out of the back of it. Punches the chaos right out. They even got in the good callback with disloyal. This is how I roll. <laughs> I, I like it man i i almost thought that like this is where the robot was gonna like fall apart because yeah, oh no same. the power is gone but i love that it was actually like a physical thing that he put together and so he just says you know emergency power come on and he's still got this horrible yeah. thing and yes. it's uh-oh and it makes sense because you know robotnik's always thinking like 15 steps ahead yeah he wouldn't go in without a contingency yeah. plan and like, even though this is like a Fort May Power Stay Puff Marshmallow Man thing, ha, 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 it's still a robot <laughs> yeah. because it's Robotnik, so it's gonna still work. It's got it's got all of the engines from those uh, gun vehicles just smooshed together in the core somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but this is yep. We've been dancing around it. This is where oh, all our heroes are are knocked out and crawling on the ground and the master emeralds right there and sonic's got to get it and uh you know tom and maddie steal this guy's poor uh jeep i (laughs) I love the shot of sonic crawling to the master emerald as the big robot is slowly creeping up behind it's just the drama it's it's really well shot (laughs) yes uh, and we, what we get is like Sonic essentially, Sonic and Matty and Tom essentially accepting death, which know, yeah. is yeah. a real sad moment. Man, they, okay, this is another, I know you said like there's a lot of comedic crashes. Um, that Jeep they're in like flips and they immediately mm. cut to everyone crawling out like, oh, you know, a couple of bruises, but it is a, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> in real life, be, that was a nasty car crash. That would be rough. <laughs> <laughs> bad end um yeah the emerald has shattered in sonic's arms and oh yeah this is where we see there's the teeny little chaos emeralds inside and they all and, fall out yeah all oh, the babies <laughs> <laughs> the little babies yeah <laughs> they're so pretty though uh i like those little ones you can buy those oh no i was gonna say it's uh you know when you smash a spider's egg sack and all the babies oh gosh flying oh out. we're coming back <laughs> oh, <yeah>. no <laughs> it was in my ex- <laughs> <laughs> so Sonic is cradling these, you know, shattered emerald pieces, thinking it's over, and here comes the giant robo, and Knuckles and Tails are running, and he smashes it down. The the dust settles, and of course we see that there is a brilliant shining golden light under his foot. Ooh. And yep, we got man, we got Super Sonic in a Sonic movie. Yeah, and it would have been Woo! such a I was not spoiled on that. <laughs> I was not spoiled on this, but I was happy. That makes one of us. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Lee. I... Damn you, McDonald's. <laughs> it wasn't even the McDonald's thing. It was like a store listing for a toy of the Death Egg robot that had... Oh my God, really? Uh, right on the box, it had a little tiny supersonic uh, toy <sighs> picture image on it. And it's like, well, can't unsee that. Well, Man. I don't know if it makes anyone feel better, but I spoiled myself on purpose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yes. so I knew that there was super cool stuff to look forward to. So sorry if that makes it worse. <laughs> I, I will tell you this much. Even knowing that that was going to happen, I was still every bit as excited as I would have been had I not known it was going to happen. Like mm-hmm. this, this whole sequence just mwah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Of course, because I have not only watched it dozens of times, but also edited hours and hours and hours of footage, could yeah. not help but see the parallels between this and episode 26 of Sonic X with the catching the giant robot fist, you know, making it explode, um, even the zipping around and the um, I'm going to put a clip of the sound in here because it sounds so cool. Man, it it just looks super cool. It's yeah. it, it is pure wonderful 
He d- he does he turns into a can opener around the head of the deputy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's neat <laughs> so to, cool. to get to, to get to Robotnik at the controls. That is a, a a super cool demonstration of that that power. And like when I was spoiled that Super Sonic was going to be in the movie, I was so worried that it was going to be oh you know it's going to be basically the way we would have we did like the two Chaos Emerald thing in Sonic F, where he's just like constantly joking around and memeing it up as he yeah. takes down Robotnik, but it's like. No, they kind of supersonic, yeah. semi supersonic. They gave it the um, like amount of weight and gravitas that I think that moment really needed, and just yes. really delivered the impact of that final climax, while also you know still managing to work in a little bit of humor right at the end where it you know was needed the most. I I just love that design as well, like. He's, he looks like, he, he reminds me of like when Supersonic used to look like he was on fire. Oh, like made yeah. of yes. fire. That look is sort of there prevalent in this golden god. He has the, it's not the the super spikes from SA2. It is straight up, he's got the Super Saiyan spikes. He mm-hmm. has the red eyes. He has the melty fire aura, which is very mm-hmm. unique to Supersonic. It it looks fantastic. Yeah. I, I I really liked every bit of it. You know, he's not quipping the whole time because um, they don't even say it out loud. I like that they're very subtle about where you can intuit that, okay, well, why did this happen? They were about to be crushed. It's because Sonic wished in his heart of hearts to be a superhero. Mm-hmm. And the, the Emeralds turned that thought into reality. And, ah, oh, it's, it's man, you're talking about the goosebumps. Yeah. It's getting me. <laughs> it's good. I like seeing the narrative continuity in my Sonic the Hedgehog movie. <laughs> Plus, you don't need jokes when you've got, like, Jim Carrey right there saying, like, let's let bygones be bygones. Oh, so you yeah. did, I did some stuff. You did some stuff. There were good, good people, people on, on both sides, sides. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> which is such a fun when sonic just kicks him down kicks it i love oh, that it's tap, literally yeah. the toe tap from like the opening 06 cutscene. oh yeah you're right <laughs> it, is. it sure is <laughs> yeah oh, man. it's a very nice touch and then i might might be one of my favorite lines in the movie is that he he lands in front of uh tom and maddie and knuckles puts himself between him and says the the hedgehog holds the power of the animal I'm sorry. He's no longer the Sonic you once knew. And he summons the, you know, the devil chaos tornado, and it's a chili dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then two more chili dogs fall right on Knuckle. Okay. He's exactly the Sonic you once knew. <laughs> this is a, I oh, that was very yeah. Dumb. Also, yeah, I, I'm glad Knuckles got a big joke like that too. Yes, but. they kind of suggest though that Supersonic is like dangerous to touch, which I kind of like that idea yeah. actually. Like he's too, he is like a gold. Sonic calls him like gold, a golden god. Yeah, that's he yeah. Is, like in that moment. Knuckles says that, and then Sonic straight up says, joking, like, it's a good thing you waited to do this, because if you hugged me before, you would have blown up. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, that idea is really interesting. It makes sense in the context of the story where he literally has, like, this unlimited power coursing through him, and it's not a power that a lot of people would be able to properly harness. So, yeah, that tracks. Man. That also goes back to the, uh, like you were saying, like, at the end of the day, in in all the games, like unless you're a hedgehog, you're not going to get a cool, glowy super form. <laughs> uh, which we'll see, we'll see. Supersonic man, it was cool man, as hell. We got it. We freaking got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we got it. I was, I was, I was wondering if they would for some re- for some reason. Like even though I know these people love the games, there was part of me wondering, like, are they going to do Supersonic? Later? Would they? Because especially when it, like you beat seem to beat the boss at one point, essentially, it is one of those things that uh, maybe it is part of like it's okay to do crazy super forms like mm-hmm. even they're superheroes you know s- Superman movies etc. But yeah, like transformations is like such a I don't know it seems like just something you wouldn't do in a movie like this for kids for wide distribution. But no, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> they did. Yeah, I because you know what? It's just cool. It is. Exactly. It is. <laughs> and like I had been so sure that they were going to save Supersonic for movie three, but no, they mm. did it here, and I am so glad they did because it made for such a just impactful moment. Phenomenally satisfying conclusion. Yeah. I mean, it is Sonic too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's, that is Sonic. absolutely true. <laughs> 
which I'll, you know, now we're moving into the epilogue, which we get a very, Leg a very ass. cute scene of, um, uh, you know, Sonic Tails Knuckles and the, uh, the Wachowskis all playing baseball. Uh, cause yeah, like, uh, like Tom wanted Sonic now has a, a, a friend posse of his own to hang out with. And, um, and he's playing baseball, the game he was playing all on his own in the first, yeah. game. Yes. <laughs> the first yeah. film, which That's is a uh, really good yeah, callback. So, oh. We we get knuckles oh. at his probably his most comedic wharf where you know he's <laughs> he said the bases ball and why he should attack the ball with the bat when his fist. Why are am stronger. I angry at the ball? <laughs> yeah. so, I'm pretty sure they literally did that exact bit with Wharf in Deep Space Nine. Death to the opposition. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh uh, my goodness! And then they they all hop in Tom's uh, Sonic Blue pickup. Really, really nice looking brand new truck. <laughs> And I love that they've left the master, they reform. Oh, Knuckles reformed the Master Emerald, just like in the yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it was a little ambiguous in the movie, but co-producer Tyson Hess clarified that, uh, yeah, no, the Chaos Emeralds have been dispersed just like they do in the games. They're now off somewhere, and the Master Emerald was reformed basically of the chaff that was left behind. So it's all just little emerald shards like it is in Adventure. I thought that was cool. I would like to point out that he revealed this information by just making a single post in the spoiler discussion topic on Sonic Retro. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of us, except much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird being on having a co-producer of a Sonic film on my Steam friends list. That's so yep. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so basically setting up that like there is going to be an Emerald Hunt at some point in the franchise's future. Oh, yeah. Which I, I I also want to say like because of the baseball game and like even to a certain extent like the fact that like they go to get ice cream afterward, I I just like this idea in my head of like all of them living together in the same house like especially Knuckles because you know through a lot of the Sonic games like Knuckles is kept to Angel Island or he's off somewhere else so like because of the friendship and the relationships that develop throughout the movie. I like me personally in like the third movie, I really hope that like they're just all together the whole time. Like maybe like some separation just for like dramatic stakes, but like they're still the triple threat. Yeah. I, I just, I really like that idea of them all sticking together. Like I, my, my, you know, interpretation based on is that, yeah, it is still very much the found family thing where they are, you know, actually staying together. That, that That's just my guess based on what I saw. No, nope. You know, Knuckles straight up thinks like his entire family is dead, so he has nowhere to go back yeah, to right. after this. So, this isn't Amnesia Knuckles who doesn't amne. This isn't Amnesiac Knuckles who doesn't remember what happened to his race and is waiting for them to return. So, yeah, this is uh, a No Angel Island for him to hang out on. Yeah, yes. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I yes, exactly. Yet, <laughs> I, I have to say. Like, I know we don't need it, but I kind of want it because it will look really good on a, in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love Paramount the Plus! <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, man, still, okay. they still are very much, uh, you know, uh, adjacent to San Francisco, where the real Angel Island is, so <laughs> plop that Master Emerald somewhere. <laughs> oh, what if Mystic Ruins were there the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get the credits, which is some really beautiful sprite work. Yes. Um, I, 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 I don't know if I was familiar with the artists, but I'm pretty sure one of them was also in that Sonic Retro topic. Yeah, they were. Mm-hmm. But yes, this was like the 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 sprite credits in the first movie are are fine, but are obviously like very much just taken from the games. But I think this was like all from scratch. These sequences were like you know commission and they look they're very cute uh even even the song is like uh, uh very nice as well yeah it's a nice little scene yeah. uh it's a big improvement over the last one i just like it yep you've got nice nice little references like all the sprites are, are custom but nice little references to specific poses from uh sonic 2 especially the the supersonic uh flying around at the end yeah. is very very nice then yeah, man, we I mean we've already talked about it, but this Let's stinger where it. Let's get <laughs> here's here's Gun picking up the uh you know, picking through the ashes of the uh the giant egg robot, you know, saying that uh they can't find Robotnik, but he's definitely dead. Nobody could have survived that. And as he's saying that, a a soldier in the background pulls his uh mask down and we see Stone as uh escaped unharmed and is uh you know infiltrated gun will that come up or is he just slipping away we'll see um god and then this this uh, person runs up to um the our our olive garden guy yeah, not agent topaz 
No, <laughs> although she, yeah, she looks. I, I thought I couldn't remember if she was in the I first. I think she movie was in the not. first one. Yeah. Um, but I, I love how she, she delivers this entire monologue with so much Sonic lore information in it really well. Fifty years ago, sir, there is something else. When we were wiping Robotnik off our database, we found something. A file buried deep in our system and dating back over 50 years. What was it? Coordinates, sir. Coordinates? To what? A secret research facility. It was a black site, sir. Someone worked very hard to keep this hidden. My god. Project Shadow. When the moment that came out... (laughs) The moment they said yeah, that, I know. <laughs> the moment they said that, I it's like, cannot... <sighs> it's and just Commander Walsh is like, my God, <laughs> Project Shadow, such a, oh such my a, God. that line, because <laughs> I, I knew I, I had it, I spoiled it for myself on purpose, so I knew about Shadow. I did not know they went well, I, they went whole hog and are doing the yeah. fifty years ago Project Shadow. Oh man. Oh, man. I what it man what are they going to do? Are they just going to do Sonic Adventure 2? Are we going to man. see a child murdered on screen? Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally the gun. We've been waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. A bullet with your name on it, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> if Maria pops up, she better be dead by that second act. <laughs> you can't So, can I just say full disclaimer when i first heard like scuttlebutt that maybe shadow was appearing at the end uh partly from the creator like the jeff fowler was saying oh we're not doing the games in chronological order anymore there's a tease for another character in the future i was like it's gonna be shadow isn't yeah. it and at first i wasn't really that into the idea because i was like i want metal sonic first and other things from the sonic game set up those things before we get to sonic adventure 2 but for some and, and, and i remember like hearing other three people saying like oh there's a Someone had this fake leak that supposedly Shadow was teased at the end, and he was like a clone of Sonic from DNA they took from G- GUN took for him in. So I was like going into this with like really low expectations, like, oh, they're gonna do a really crap Shadow, aren't they? But no, the moment they said fifty years ago, suddenly yes, I was like, yes. you <laughs> sons of bitches, you got me. <laughs> See, beautiful son of a See, bitch. I thought for sure that was the route they were gonna take, is the cloning route. I thought if not yeah. if not gun then Robotnik because it's like you know Robotnik still got the quill so it's like yes. use that as a base to clone uh, Sonic create Shadow and when Shadow goes inevitably goes rogue because he's Shadow and he's like I should have just made a robot from the start it's something that I could actually control <laughs> yeah. and he ends up creating Metal Sonic in the same film they could still go down a similar route but yeah. it's it's so weird because I know these people know Sonic and I know they care about Sonic but f- there's this part of my brain is like but they're not actually going to do it right are they they're not going to actually acknowledge things from the game like this but then they just said it <laughs> then they just said Project Shadow yes. they had that Olive Garden guy say with all the gravitas in the world <laughs> my god Project Shadow <laughs> oh <laughs> it's silly beautiful Thing. But I was oh, so happy. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, I freaked out it's, in the theater. I was like, ah! He he looks he looks like Shadow in this world. He's got yeah. the uh he's got his inhibitor rings, he's got his gloves, um, he's he's got these uh you know restraints on that are keeping him in this thing, but take those off and he just looks like Shadow. Yeah. He's got the same like proportions as Sonic, and it, it is straight up just a Shadow the Hedgehog. I thought you know, you could tone down the design and not do nope. all of the red highlights, but now everything is there. Yes. And of yeah. course he opens his eyes in the capsule and he's got uh you know the sonic sparkly power but you know crimson red like a shadow would it's i'm just i'm looking at it right now me too he looks so lovely (laughs) (laughs) they just as he's even got his little chest fluff yeah (laughs) oh man because i even thought when when i uh, you know, when I, I, I realized it was Shadow, um, but didn't have the whole sequence. Again, like you said before, they say 50 years ago, setting up the arc and Gerald Robotnik. Oh. I thought, you know, what if they even did something weird like, you know, it's not Metal Sonic, it's Shadow. But then like, you know, the, the climax of the third act, uh, Shadow gets like half his face blown off and he's Metal Sonic, the Terminator underneath <laughs> there. Um, and, you know, they just like did two birds with one stone. But yeah. Yeah, no, like like you said, they are 
it seems like they are fully committed to doing like it's some version of the Sonic Adventure 2 backstory. That's okay. Okay. So this is the thing about it. Like I know, I knew they wanted to get to Shadow as soon as possible because he's so popular. He's such a cool guy. But part of me felt that was kind of cynical to just jump right to that. But when you give me the Sonic Adventure, like the hint, the slightest taste of Sonic Adventure 2 lore here, just the tiniest bit, I'm suddenly like, you know what? Yes, please. Give that to me immediately. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> yeah. And I've, <sighs> I've, seen, I've seen people sharing around clips from the games, but mostly Sonic X which actually does a super good job you know you can argue about giving you know amy's parts to chris and yeah. whatnot but showing like what a what a a, a tragedy shadow a, a compelling tragedy that shadow's original character is and just the very hint that they might do a version of that and like you know in all seriousness you know I, I do not think they're going to execute Maria Robotnik on stream, <laughs> but even keeping some of that so that Shadow mm-hmm. has that like element of dark tragedy that, you know, makes him want to conquer the world for a bit makes me really excited. So here's my theory. It's a stretch, but if this is anywhere close to it, I think this they could make this work. They don't kill Maria on screen in a raid, but they do still decide that, you know, Gerald's experiments are, you know, they're too dangerous. They can't be allowed to continue. So they make the decision to blow up the arc with, you know, some sort of big nuclear whatever. And so Maria, sensing that death is near, there's only one escape pod left. She decides to give it a shadow, tells him to help humanity. He gets launched off just in time to see the missile or whatever collide with the colony and destroy it. And... 50 years later, as Shadow is going on his big revenge streak, one mis- one Dr. Robotnik comes across what is left of the Space Colony Arc in cold storage. And he's like, I, I see something here. Only, you know, semicircle, you know, let's, let's think bigger. And the Arc becomes the Death Egg. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I I feel like you could totally, you know, set up this idea of the arc actually becoming the framework for what becomes the Death Egg in this continuity. <laughs> that yes, I was about to say, given Sonic game continuity, like would make so much more sense that Eggman would know about, you know, his grandfather in the arc yeah. in like Sonic One, Sonic Two, and uh, that see that 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 would be cool to tie that all together. And honestly, this could be a good sort of tie-in in that respect because you know, movie one establishes that Eggman was an orphan, so being able to actually mm-hmm. like trace back his lineage and find out that oh, oh yeah, wow, my grandfather man. was up to some wild crap back in the 70s just like everybody else yep oh god yeah, yeah that would be the 70s <laughs> yeah. now. that would be <laughs> right lord oh man man we could we could probably go for another uh two hours and 30 minutes talking about yeah. what we think the follow-up would be but... uh it does beg the question though who's gonna play shadow because we don't know here. We yeah, don't no. hear it here. But oh, yeah. We, they, yeah they, were very, no, no they were very conscious to keep him silent so they don't have to commit to anybody yet. Yep. Uh, you've already spoiled me too much, Luke, by pointing out that uh, Keanu Reeves uh, would make th- th- the perfect movie shadow <laughs> in my brain because he has that wonderful, especially like John Wick or, you know, whatever he's doing is Batman in that crypto movie of the, he has that dark gravitas, but also under it is still that Keanu Reeves from speed <laughs> tone yeah. that fits, fits my favorite version of shadow to, to, I've heard people say like, he doesn't sound raspy enough. And I was like, Nope, it's, it's fine. <laughs> the way it is. <laughs> yes, I, I've seen, really I've is. seen a lot of names thrown around over the last couple of days. Like I see a lot of people say Adam driver which i could maybe see uh i saw a couple people say robert pattinson which you know if you're going for angsty shadow that could work hey man i've heard i've heard his batman it is pretty damn yeah. close to <laughs> like you said that wonderful broody shadow <laughs> and robert pattinson is a big old nerd. yeah that's true <laughs> oh yeah he loved it. He's like, hey, I had trouble choosing between tifa and Aerith and final fantasy 7 apparently <laughs> didn't we all <laughs> <laughs> he would definitely he would definitely be in on like the same way like Idris Elba has like thrown himself into it. I yeah. feel like Pattinson just from his very silly press tours would 
I think he would be a good fit, and I would like to imagine he would be in on yeah. the joke. <laughs> I saw one guy throw out Carl Urban, and I'm like, hmm. Carl Urban can do Dude, anything. That, that's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touching him, butcher from the boys as oh, one. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> see, I go right to like, uh, hey, tenuous uh, STC connections, but his judge dread. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Like pie in the sky speculation that this guy could get his own movie. Do you think? Oh, <laughs> maybe I, about the PG thirteen. Yeah, pool. I'm. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> I mean, th- speaking of people getting solo projects, I feel like we gotta like. I went to this movie asking okay, can Idris Elba Knuckles actually carry a series? And I'm walking out, I think I could see it work. And this is where the stuff I talked about earlier, where I have my theories, comes in. I think that Knuckles series is going to be about, you know, finding out what actually happened to the Echidnas after that final clash. Because there's no way that literally everybody died in a fight between one owl and a horde of Echidnas. And... I think they're going to use that and to delve into the backstory of the mythology and to set up chaos because I've, that seems like an obvious Ooh, thing to go to. But that'd be so cool. The only other thing I think is a guarantee for the Knuckle series, I think it is going to be a cat and mouse race for the Master Emerald between Knuckles and Rouge. God, that would be perfect. Okay, I was about to say, uh, you know, close out my speculation with. Because of Shadow, because of Gun, because of 50 years ago, are we going to see Rouge the Bat in a Sonic movie before we see Amy Rose? I I think Amy is a lock for movie three, no matter what happens. But I think Rouge is going to be the Catwoman of Knuckles' solo series. Like, there's going to, you know, she's out for herself, Master Thief, a little bit of flirtation between them. And, you know, maybe at the end of things, she might go down the path towards willingly or otherwise working with gun but i think that Mm -hmm. like the rivalry between them is going to end up being a big focus of that show although i don't think i don't know we don't necessarily need amy because (laughs) we've proven that we can have a sonic adventure 2 adaptation where amy's not that important just shove the human (laughs) character in there (laughs) have shadow beat the (laughs) donut lord on the space calling (laughs) arc (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'd actually want to see that scene now. <laughs> All this to say that I am excited to see what comes of the Sonic the Hedgehog cinematic universe, which is a sentence I never thought I would hear myself say. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, man. I mean, I remember thinking as a kid, I wanted a Sonic movie. Even after, you know, growing up in the era of some of the most uh, controversial <laughs> In terms of quality video game movies, I always wanted a Sonic movie. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, is there things I would change about these? Yeah, sure. But uh, Mm -hmm. like we like we said, after airing our our grievances, is that the the things that I genuinely enjoyed and made me excited about this, this sequel um, made me like it it just it it warms my heart. I'm excited for. Yeah. With the with the same with the same creative team. We got ourselves a Sonic movie. That's it. That's the sentence. Like, yeah. can you believe that? <laughs> it happened. Um, and it was good. I still have trouble believing it, but here we are. Because I thought for sure, because we all knew, like, well, before the movie even came out, we knew that it was going to end with Robotnik, like, having the fine, like, they tease Robotnik looking like Robotnik. He's got the, and... It was going to be like, oh, that's a cool thing to look forward to. And then we would never get a sequel because <laughs> the Sonic design was so bad it would ruin the whole project. But no, uh, we got a sequel. It's good. And now there's going to be more. Uh, and you know what? Like, this movie is quite long. Uh, there's a bit during the second act. Like, we, we all mentioned the dance battle stuff. And there was a point where I was like, mm, I'm not sure if I'm quite on the board with this as much as I am. But then they slammed back into, like whatever gear it is that's fast (laughs) i don't know how to drive a car (laughs) and with tails's stuff and and then it was was off running and it's they 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 care i got the impression at that point they care about making a good sonic movie that's fun and has nice characters and gives something for the old fans something for the new something for the kids something for the oldies like us (laughs) and uh yeah that's my thoughts on it 
Glad it happened. Ready for more. Yes. Thank you very much. Amen to that. I, I'm discerning that there is a lot of passion behind this. And like you said, that they do care about the movie they are putting out. And man, I mean, like I said, just go watch that first movie and then watch this one and see just how hard they are leaning into the cool Sonic stuff. And not just because it's, like you said, cool for the, the people that recognize it, but the stuff that has like stayed through the games that has made it an interesting franchise to come back to the stuff that is made Sonic Sonic and I I feel good about that. I'm I'm excited for more and I, I, I trust the people involved to to continue doing something that is is going to be a fun and uh, worthwhile experience. Yeah. They really made good <laughs> on the errors of the first and even before the first one came out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They made good on some of the errors that this movie had when it when it was coming out. Uh Colleen O'Shaughnessy did get her credit in the poster. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. listen. They listen. And she's uh, in the she's in the it. opening credits too. She is yeah. she is right before a with Idris Elba <laughs> and Jim Carrey. Yes. Um, she's up there because that that is also yeah one of those things I talked about how that might be my my the most memorable part is to get a very heartfelt performance from her as Tails. Um, and it absolutely made made the movie for me. So yeah, I was I was excited about that too. It just, it, it sincerely feels good to like, you know, we, we've, we're old enough now where we've seen plenty of video game adaption movies where it's either just completely off the rails or in, I guess maybe in a couple of cases, like they tried, but it just did not work out. And it just feels so good to have like, like two, two out of two movies with Sonic, like honestly, you know, Sonic being one of the biggest video game franchises in the world. And they just, you know, I'd say like 98%, they just get it right. You know, and it just, it feels good. And we're all just hoping for the hat trick for a third movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess, I guess to like kind of wrap it up, we can, we, let's, I want to give a very sincere thanks to Jeff Fowler, Tyson Heese, and every single individual part of this movie who made it all come together. Because, you know, uh, I would like to say from The Hill is Always Greener, a very sincere thank you to everyone involved in this movie. For sure. As someone else who who likes to collaborate on Sonic projects with some of my uh, best friends, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a great feeling. Yeah, for once, thank you, Hollywood, for making a video game. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I think I think all that really wraps it up. So uh, before we get to the goodbyes, of as always, you can find us on the different social medias. I'm at Rock the Jake on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And uh, I'm Falero. You can find me on Twitter and all of the socials under that. That's F A U L E E. No, that's not right. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, I'm sending them the wrong place. Don't go down that one. <laughs> F A U L E R R O. There we go. We got it at the end. Lads. <laughs> <laughs> um and i'm jeremy also a uh, game buddy you can find me on twitter at great job jeremy that's gr and the number eight and you can find me on twitter at cyberlink 420 but what are we going to talk about next time oh, oh. what wait we weren't yes, we oh yeah yes. we did i came up with it <laughs> oh, good. i like it when that happens <laughs> So just so we've talked about a Sonic movie this time, but last time we talked about another Sonic movie, but that was inspired by something else. Because hey, we haven't talked about the games in a while. How about we have a little uh, I don't know discussion about Sonic CD? Yeah, remember that oh, one? There is so Ooh, there yes. is so much to talk about with that game. I'm excited. We can almost like talk about it for multiple episodes if we go feel like you it. know mm -hmm. they just we they got just we got some fun discussion. We got, we got some fun things. If you're a fan of Sonic CD, then stick around with us for a while. We're done talking about outside media, I swear. We're gonna well, <laughs> maybe not. For now. For but, now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the very least, we're we're focusing our efforts on a game that's rather good, I think. But, but maybe you guys disagree. We're gonna find out. It's gonna be very controversial, full of hot takes, just like with this movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, Sonic CD. That's gonna. Yeah, be I'm looking forward to it. I'm this excited. is Sonic CD yes. was the second Sonic game I ever owned, so it has a very oh, cool. special place in my heart. Interesting. And of course, as always, special thanks to Amy Waters for the use of our theme song from the album "Gotta Go Slow." It is available uh, on Bandcamp and other streaming services. You can also follow Amy on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, give her a huge shout out. Give her some love because she is a wonderful composer. For real. Uh, mm. Yes. And we're at the end of the show, so let's wrap it up. I am Rock the Jake. I'm Game Buddy. I'm Cyberlink. And I'm Falero. 
And remember, yes, Keanu, you are a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's irrelevant. I, I want to believe. I want to believe. My fingers are crossed. I'm going to need guns. Lots of guns. <laughs> <laughs> so,